Hello, hello. Hello and welcome in. All my Red Wing soldiers. How are we doing today? Hope you're doing well. Uh, another warm one up here today. And I am out of jorts. Apparently I only have... What's up, Chaga? Welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Apparently I only have two pair of jorts now. I think the rest got ripped because of the pockets. So, unfortunately I'm sitting here in jeans. I do have the fan on, so hopefully it doesn't distract too much. I'm doing well, Jago. I'm doing well. Getting ready for another week. Getting ready for another week, and the next week is a short week. and Everything's going good. Hanging in there. And, and thanks to your generosity yesterday, we've unlocked another Tier 1 emote slot. I'm just waiting for Twitch to approve it. It's the, uh, the LOL emote, which, again, isn't up just yet. Come on. Pain in the ass. So, yep. You got another one of them coming. So I took the Tier 3 emote. And moved it down to tier one. So again, we're just waiting for that to get approved by Twitch. Which again, I don't think it'll be uh, there'll be an issue because I already had it. We keep having the same emotes approved over and over. And we may, I might have to uh, commission a couple more. I still have my list of uh, emotes that I want. Actually, I should, uh, should cross off the ones I have now. I got my notes one. My rage. My derp. And my money. I got my channel points there. So I'd like to get a, a hype emote. Um, again, the one company I go through does four, you know, has a, a, a package deal for four emotes. So I'd probably like to get a hype emote, a lurk. Probably a GG. And one more. Not to think about it. But <clears throat> today we are getting back into Danganronpa 2. Because um, apparently we are now going to do separate investigations. We did our first part with Hajime. But apparently, we are going to do our second half of the investigation as Nagito. <clears throat> yes, and again, I hypothesize that Hajime and Nagito were like one and the same person, just like split personalities. Because, you know, Nagito can be off his rocker on occasion. So we're going to see what happens. And I am excited to get into that. Which is saying something for me. Because this game has aggravated the hell out of me on occasion. So we're going to get into it. And as always, let me know if my, my game audio or my mic audio needs to be adjusted. If it's too loud or too quiet, I can always do that. Again, we also found out, you know, we got a little uh, history of the Future Foundation or World Ender. 
and they noticed that uh, Kuya, Kuya's picture was in there as one of the survivors of the Hope's Peak killing game. And of course he died first, so we can't ask him anything. I miss my girl. Oh, no, there she is. All right. Byakuya Togari. Yay! So again, oh, oh, that's pink. Uh, we left off before we got some information. So let's let's chat with our folks here. Hey, Kazuichi, if you don't mind, can you inform me? The stuff about a rumbling noise and the ringing clock. What was that all about? You. Seriously, you don't know? You're so kind, Kazuichi. Thank you for actually taking the time to explain it to me. Oh, my God. Uh, this man is going to test my patience. Huh? <clears throat> hmm. So that's how it is. Fine, I'll tell you. It happened last night. I was sleeping peacefully in my room and all of a sudden I heard this huge sound. <coughs> now. We have to remember that Nagito and Gundam are in soundproof rooms, so they shouldn't hear anything. Also, Chiaki and Sonia are in soundproof rooms, so they shouldn't have heard anything. Soda, um, Fuyihiko, um, um, fuck, who's else? Kazuichi. They're all in the shitty rooms that are, you know, you can hear everything. Ah! Oh, the hell? The sound was super loud, so I rushed out of my room. And as I went down the hall towards the lounge. Hey, what are you doing? This rock is... It's louder than the supreme ruler of the netherworld bellowing for a sacrifice. Don't go making all that noise so suddenly. It, it's not me. The wall clock just started ringing. I was just trying to stop it. Then hurry up and stop it already. I, I, I know I'm in the middle of doing that. Well, that's when the sound finally stopped. Uh. Man, that totally freaked me out. Well, I'm definitely wide awake now. What did you do to me? My mental defenses were bombarded with sonic resonance. You! Fuihiko, was this not your doing just now? Shut up! Why would anyone do something so childish? Huh? You must have rushed over to hearing that sound, but you sure seem to get there pretty fast. Well, yeah. Well, I didn't rush over here. I was at the lounge by coincidence. You coincidence, hmm? Huh? What? You doubt me? Whatever, I don't really give a crap, but it's 5.30 a.m. Man. man, thanks to Fuyihiko, I woke up early for no reason. I should go back to sleep. Kablam! Huh? huh? What was that sound? What's going on? Earthquake? Alright, so it's kind of sus that Fuyihiko is already up and out of his room. This pressure. <clears throat> Did not feel like it shook. Hey, 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 hey. There's no way this building is going to collapse, right? Hey. hey, Katsuichi, stop clinging to me. And that's what happened. I see. So you're the one who was clinging to Fuyihiko. That's what you latched onto? That's obviously wrong. That's not the important part. All right, where's my... I can turn this down a smidge. 
What happened afterward? Did you guys just separate? Hey. We decided to wait things out, but in the end, nothing else happened. Also. And not just that, we all felt really weak, so we decided to just go back to our rooms for a while. Hmm, I see. Yep, what you said just now was extremely important. Thanks to that, I've thought of one suspicious person. What? Who are you talking about? Me, of course. Huh? I mean, isn't this strange? I was the only one who didn't notice an alarm was so loud everyone else came out of their rooms. <sighs> well, the same goes for the rumbling noise that you guys heard after that. If Gundam heard it and he was in his room, that's suspicious. Why, you... Hey, you better not be trying to confuse the shit out of us. Of course I'm not. For now. See, this is what annoys the fuck out of me with this guy. Hey, hey, hey. That for now, Linus, was making us even more worried. Anyway, it seems there's no doubt that what you guys just told me is a very important clue. The wall clock alarm you heard first, and the rumbling noise that came right after. Now then, how do these noises relate to this case? Wall clock? Hey, you said you witnessed Nicomaro at sunrise, right? Can you explain that to me in a little more detail? I... I was so hungry yesterday that I couldn't sleep. I figured it was nearly morning, so I went to check the clock in the lounge. Turns out I was totally off. It was still around 5 a.m. Hey! And that's when it happened. I heard the sound of the door closing off in the distance. That's right, Nicomaro was in the standard room. When I stuck my head out from the lounge... <clears throat> I saw Nekomaru was back. He was about to go down to the first floor. I thought about running after him, but I didn't have the energy or willpower to do it. <laughs> if I knew something like this would happen, I would have mustered the strength to follow him. Now see, if they all heard the noise at 5.30 a.m., and all three of these guys, except Nagito, were in the lounge... Or if, you know, the Nagato in his room, that has, that leads me to believe that one of the girls did this. Hey, hey! But why would Nekomaru wander off so early in the morning? I... I was wondering that, too. I mean, I already knew I wasn't going to get any sleep. So I just sat in a lounge, stared off into space for no real reason, and waited for him to come back. Jeez! That's when a clock in the lounge started ringing. Thanks to that loud alarm, I completely forgot about Nekomaru. Until just now. Then, from the time you saw Nekomaru until the alarm rang, you were at the lounge the whole time? Well, what were you doing during that time? By chance, were you thinking about everything that's happened so far and getting choked up? What? Huh? Was I right? Of course not, asshole. You're completely wrong. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. And I thought you were reminiscing about Pekko or something. But that can't be right. After all, you already know how pointless it is to cling to memories of the dead. Hiko's account. All right. Yep, I get it now. Thanks for everyone's detailed information. I'm slowly getting a grasp of the situation. If I put events in chronological order, Fuyihiko witnessed Nekomaru at 5. That's the time Nekomaru apparently went down to the first floor. At 5.30, the alarm clock in the lounge started ringing. When that happened, you two woke up, left your rooms to go to the lounge where Fuyihiko was. But after that, you heard a strange rumbling sound that didn't quite make sense. Let's make history. Now that I think about it, something might have happened to Nekomaru during that noise. If so, that must have been Nekomaru's final scream before he breath breathed his last. Hmm. Hold on. If Nekomaru died when we heard that sound, does that mean we have an alibi? Alibi? I mean... When we heard that rumbling noise, we were at the lounge, you know? If that's when the killer murdered Nekomaru, then we have a solid alibi. Can't argue with that. Hmm, it might be too soon to declare that just yet. Can't be certain unless we first clear up the mystery surrounding that rumbling noise. Hmm, a rumbling noise, huh? Did something heavy fall over something? Hey, Shannon! Welcome in! Hope you're doing well. Happy Sunday. Also, based on what everyone just told me, there's another thing I'm curious about. You all heard the alarm clock in the lounge go off just before the rumble. What do you suppose that means? Hey! Hey, haven't we talked enough? I really think I should repair the elevator soon. Oh my, you're still here? Uh, once the elevator's fixed, I'm not going to let you anywhere near it. 
And so Kazuichi ran down the stairs, complaining for some reason. So what should we do now? Ah, oh, there's something I wanted you to do. After the elevator is fixed, there's something I want you to investigate. What is it? The clocks in the first floor lounge. Uh, the clocks in the first floor lounges of both Grape House and Strawberry House. Right after that, you heard a strange rumbling sound that didn't quite make sense. Huh? Well, why? I'll tell you later. Hey, bastard! Fine, but why are you asking me? You can investigate that yourself. I would investigate it myself, but by the time the elevator is fixed, there's a chance I might not be with you all anymore. What? Huh? huh? Anyway, I'm counting on you. Oh, that bastard! That bastard doesn't make oh, that bastard doesn't make any sense. More typos. Now then, here comes the main event. There's only one thing I can do for them. I can go to that place for everyone's sake. Can't let them face that danger. It must be the pariah who goes in their place. Uh, where did Gundam go? I wanted to talk to him. Fui, he called us you handle the clocks. I want you to thoroughly investigate the clocks in both houses and see if there's anything strange. Damn right. I don't really understand, but I might as well take care of that. That's it. I should investigate one more time before I head over there. The elevator and the door at the far back of the strawberry hall. Just in case, it might be good to check and make sure they're really blocked off. Well, actually, I want to go upstairs first. Can I go upstairs? Is the game going to let me? Yes, it is. A lot of playground, yep. If this flower presents hope, then I'm the soil in which they extend their roots, maybe. Nah, it's still too presumptuous of me. I'm just a brief meal. Okay. Apparently there's nothing up here. Explore, yeah, see, these two would have heard it. Gundam should not have heard that alarm. If he came out after the alarm was ringing, there's something suspicious because he's in a soundproof room. And where the hell did Gundam go? I want to talk to him. Well, he's not in his room. All right, there's Soda. Where's Gundam? There's Gundam. This too must be the will of causality. I can think of only one reason why the killer barred the door to Strawberry Hall. They wish to prevent me from going to the crime scene. Judgment! Which means the killer was afraid. Afraid of the conclusion promised by my assumptions. It's not what I wanted to hear. Whoa, hello! Strawberry Hall door that leads to the tower. The button is broken. There's no way it'll open. As I recall, based on what Fuyuhiko told Hajime over the phone, the other side of this door is also barred with chains. They must, uh, must have been really cautious to go to the trouble of barring the door from both sides. Something about that seems a little suspicious. Let's make history. The killer's intent. I can only, uh, I can think of only one explanation. Ah, Gundam. Perhaps they intended to keep me from entering the scene of the crime. Again with this? Listen well. Which means the killer was afraid. Yeah, uh, we heard this. That was probably it. We already talked about that. The button's been added. Okay. I gotta go to the full death room. Final death room. 
the elevator and the door at the far back. Is okay. I just confirmed the door, so now I gotta check the the elevator. The elevator is still being repaired. Get lost. Gee, stop getting in the way. Ah, looks like I'm disliked. Oh well, it's understandable. I mean, compared to you talented fellows, I'm just a piece of trash. Jesus. Ah. Yeah, yeah, whatever. If I press the button next to the elevator, the door should open so I can ride it. But nothing happens when I press it. Looks like it's definitely broken. Huh? What are you doing? You're getting in the way of my repairs. Hey, why did the elevator break in the first place? Man. Oh, the killer malfunctioned the safety device. Huh? Look, you see that silver cover under the button? It looks like that uh, that's the elevator's control panel. They probably opened it up and messed with the settings. The cover is locked, so they wouldn't have been able to open it unless they had some kind of tool. Hmm, are there any tools in this building? Ah. No, there shouldn't be. I don't really know if they forced it open with the tool anyway. The control panel on this side wasn't the one that was forced open. I see, it's the control panel on the Grape House's side that's broken then. Yeah. Uh, if the one on this side isn't broken, that's the only thing I can think of. I'm pretty sure there should be a control panel over there, too. Plus, the elevator is stuck on the Grape House side. Wouldn't that mean the last person who used this elevator went to Grape House? Uh. Yep, it's official. The elevator was disabled on the other side. Hey. hey, I don't have time to talk to you. Hurry up and go away. <laughs> Jeez, I'm trying to do repairs without any tools. No matter how much time I get, it won't be enough. If you don't have any tools, why don't you use this? Huh? Whoa, wait, whoa, what, what, what? Where the fuck did you get a Swiss Army knife? Whoa! Is this a multi-tool? Where'd you get something like this? I had it with me before I even arrived at the fourth island. Oh, Nagito. Oh, Nagito, Nagito, Nagito. Hey, Adam! Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well today. Thank you for joining us. Why does Nagito have a multi-tool with him? Very, very suspicious. If we're going to explore a new island, it's essential to bring this kind of equipment, right? You serious? A guy like you has been walking around with a dangerous tool this whole time? Huh? Is there something wrong? Uh. It's nothing. Then I'll let you have this. Your repairs might go faster now, right? But in exchange, I want you to do something. Huh? What? That multi-tool has a compass. After the elevator is fixed, I want you to ride the elevator and see how the compass reacts. What the hell for? Well, to be honest, there's something I still don't understand regarding the structure of this building. So please... I really need this information to find out the relationship between the building and the elevator. See, I don't know if the elevator is actually an elevator. It might be just a room. Oh, it might be similar to the, the tower. <laughs> Nagito is Nagito. Yeah, he's un unreal. Um, similar to the tower. If you walk in one door... You know, you're in Strawberry Tower. If you walk in from the other door, you're in Grape Tower. I wonder if it's the same way with the elevator. If you walk in one door and then out the other side, you tactically didn't move. It just held you there for a couple seconds. Huh? I didn't really get it, but, well, as long as I'm just checking a compass, I don't mind. I'm glad. Then I'll leave the rest to you. Elevator. Just as I thought. There's no mistaking it. The elevator... And the strawberry hall door look like they're completely broken. I didn't expect the contact elevator to be disabled from Grape House. As long as it's disabled, there's no way to move between houses. Which means the person who disabled the elevator would be stuck at Grape House. That person, they should be still be at Grape House, but... No, it's too soon for the form an answer. And again, that's what I was thinking. Uh, but I won't be too late to find the answer, even after I finish investigating that room. No problem, madam. Again, we just started a little bit ago. The final dead room. Only those who win the life-threatening game contained within will reach the octagon. And inside the octagon, the ultimate weapon awaits. There's no doubt Nakamura's killer has been to that place. 
No matter where I search, there are no weapons anywhere in this building. Regardless of the weapon used to kill Nakamaru, the killer must have attained it, obtained it there. If that's the case, we should get going. Also, unlike everyone else, I don't mind dying at all. It's all the more reason why I should go. I think I'm still missing a... What the hell? I see, so this is the final dead room. Feels a little eerie. Hope I don't get scared. Oh, it's scary. Oh, hello. Did the door just lock? I see. The door is designed to automatically lock. It's not, uh, it's not I would have turned back if it stayed. The, the language and the phrasing in this game is a pain in the ass. If not, I would have turned back if it stayed unlocked. I mean, I, I don't know where these get these words from. Oh, hi, Monami. And I thought the door finally opened. Now it's locked again. Why are you in here? I figured you'd turn up since I haven't seen you in a while, but I never expected to see you here. Nagito? Why are you in such a dangerous place? Same to you. Why are you here? I... I heard the body discovery announcement and I thought something happened in this room. And you got locked in when you came inside? You're a fool from head to toe. I am truly ashamed. Well, not that I care. Just make sure you don't get in my way. Um... Get in your way? The life-threatening game is going to start soon, right? It'd be annoying if you got in my way. Could, could it be? Are you planning to do it? Well, if I don't, I can't get out of here, right? And besides, the only way trash like me can be useful is by risking my life for everyone's sake. That's wrong! You're wrong. Megito is not trash at all. Well, I beg to differ. There's no such thing as a human being who doesn't deserve to live. <gasps> I know I'm being heartwarming right now, but my heart is super scared and pounding like crazy. Are you sure you're not just excited? You know, isn't it exciting to think that I could finally be useful for the sake of those who should who shoulder hope? Now then, about this so-called life-threatening game. Alrighty. Nagito, if there's anything you don't get, just ask me. By all means, I'll help you and make sure you get out of here. Leave it to me. Bring it on, escape game. That sounds like something a teacher would say, but I shouldn't expect too much from her. Is there a time limit on this thing? It's a Monokuma plushie. You want me to punish you guys? Hmm? Looks like this plushie talks if you squeeze the tummy. Thrills, chills, kills! Life-size Monokuma, now for the special price of only $10,000. An advertisement? Ah, it's a laptop. Looks like it's on, but it's locked, so I can't really access it. Doesn't look like you can input the password. How are we going to turn it on? It's locked. Okay, that won't open. Oh, pliers. These might be useful for something, so I should grab them. Hmm, this looks like some kind of password. The first letters of the days of the week are probably the password. Okay. I doubt it's that simple. This television looks broken. There's something written in blood on the wall. Hmm. Looks like it's the number three. These blood symbols alone don't make sense, but maybe if I combine them with something else. It says, watch the news in blood. Oh, I might get, uh, I might get cursed just by looking at it. Uh, it's just a secret code. Plus, it's a pretty common one. Hmm? Uh, secret code? Nagito, do you happen to know what this means? Yeah, it's a common riddle. 
I have no idea. There's something shining under the bed. Hmm, I can't reach it. Looks like the bed is fixed to the floor. Can't even move it. Is there something thin and long? No, there's something written in blood on the floor. Is this the number four, right? The number, huh? It looks like a different symbol to me. Like, for instance, a symbol that you often see on maps. See, there's a seven. Something written in blood. You can see the number seven. Blood symbols alone to make sense, but maybe if I combine them with something else. Yeah, see, there's a six. This must be the unlocking device for the iron bars. I probably have to put in the four-digit passcode. I have a secret plan. If you input 9,999 combinations, it'll open eventually. You're right, but there doesn't seem to be any buttons for inputting a password. Uh-oh. Looks like it might be under this lid, but it doesn't seem to open. Not just that. What's this red light that's on top of the device? This door. Oh, there's a hanger. There's just one hanger hanging in the closet. <clears throat> Might be used for something, so I should grab it just in case. And there's a five in there. Yep, yeah, looks like the number five. Blood seam is long. Shining under the bed, I can't reach it. Can't even move it. Yet. Pause. Yeah. How do I combine them? It's been a while. If I straighten it out, it'll become a thin stick. Wonderful. There's a seven, there's a six. Yeah, number six. It makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it was here. Looks like, looks like you'll find a lot of stuff, but what shall we do? You're right. You can learn the details of items you find by using the A button. If you move the cursor over the item and press the... Oh, okay. What are you saying about the A button? This triangle button? You don't need to worry about it. I'm just talking to myself. Looks like you can use these items on each other. Okay. Okay. There we go. Obtain the desk key. Alrighty. Maybe we can escape with this. Okay, who knows? <coughs> I'm getting there. Oh, scissors. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to cut open this Monokuma plushie. Talking might be powered by a battery. All right, let's start cutting it open. Enough already. Uh, I didn't need any grannies. Mm. What a loud thing. Cut it open right away. Also, there was something. Ten the batteries. <laughs> no, not the Teddy Kuma. Um, I'm going to try and use these on this.
No? Telephone looks broken. Batteries on it? Maybe we gotta make an antenna for it? Again, it says watch the news, but I can't turn the TV on. This is also a four-digit code, huh? But it looks like you can change the numbers with this one. Yeah, <laughs> I'll decline as well. The password open this. I have a feeling that the hint is close by. Your channel points are 696? Nice. All right. Again, we have a... There's a five. Five, three, six, seven... If you don't know something, don't overwork yourself. Feel free to ask me any time. Yeah. We have no... I mean, two again, two, three, four, five. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I don't think it could be that easy. Seven, seven, five, three, six. No. Nope. There's got to be something to do with these numbers. Three, six, seven, five, maybe? Nope. Leave it to me. The safe is a toughie, did you find out, Nagito? The numbers on the wall are definitely the password for the safe. I see to look at the numbers by watch the news. 
North, east, west, and south. I see. Okay. I three, six, seven, five. I tried that. And I tried seven. Oh. Three, six, five, seven. Not three six five seven. So it's got to be seven five six three. Leave it to me. Number huh? looks like a different symbol to me. Like for instance, the symbol that you often see on maps. Right, it's trying to tell me where north is. And I did three six five seven, and it didn't work. Four first. There's only four letters. There's a five in the closet. That's what I'm thinking. Four is north. So it should have been three, six, five, seven, and it didn't work. Yeah, see? Shut up, Monami! Um, five, three, seven, six. No. Oh, the. Th okay. Six, seven. Three, five. Leave it to me. He, item, he's trying to help. All right, I've tried every combination there is. I've tried three, six, ne yeah, north, east, west, south. I've tried three, six, five, seven. I've tried five, three, seven, six. I've tried seven, seven, five, six, three. And I've tried six, seven, three, five. None of them work. So, anybody want to tell me what this code is? Because th I don't believe the four is supposed to be a four. It's got to be the. It's got to be the seven, six, three, and then this five in the closet. 
I've tried all four possible combinations and none of them are working. Because I have no idea what the hell this is supposed to mean. Does this four mean that this is north this way? And that I'm looking south? Four, six, three, seven. Now I get it. I thought this line. I thought this looked like a, a, a marker here. What do you put under a six or a nine to show that that's the number? This six is not a six. I was right to start with a three. Because this indicates... This is north. That's a nine. That's ridiculous. A digital camera and USB stick, huh? Okay, looks like there's no battery inside the digital camera. It does... Use the battery and a digital camera. Now we can use the digital camera. Just as I thought. Looks like I was able to unlock the lock with this USB stick. Now I need to put the password in next. Maybe the memo that was inside the desk drawer might be the laptop's password. I got it. The first letters of the days of the week. Huh? That was wrong. I doubt it's that simple. Um. wonder if there are any other hints. We haven't used... I should check the picture that's inside. Oh, duh. It looks like a photo of, spa of a space post that's uh, posted on the wall somewhere. Hmm, I wonder what it means. I know what it means. Based on the memo of the picture and the digital camera, the answer must be... Oh, this is going to take a long time. Sun. Mercury. 
Venus. Earth. Mars. Jupiter. Saturn. Is this Othello? Hmm. Yep. Is this Othello? Hmm. What is this? Looks like Othello. Oh. Okay. If you don't know something, oh, yeah. One, three, four. All right, I'm going to write this down. Uh, so we got one, three, four, three, three, four, one, two. So we have one, three, four. I'm not seeing one, three, four. The last number I think is a three. We had a single light, maybe that's one. Um, there's only one number that has three lights, and that's a seven. There's, oh, it could be a one or a four. And that could be a three, six, or nine. Yeah, that's the reset. Well, hey. Could the lights on top of the unlocking device actually represent the numbers? If I use the signal book on the laptop to decipher it, um. if you know the number, how will we be able to input it? There's only one thing in the room that you can input a number into, right? Done with the safe? We'll try seven, one, three, three. Seven, four, three, three. Yeah, see, it's... Hmm. Yeah, see, there's no code for that first number. There's again, there's no code. Uh, 
I think the lights are off again. Leave it to me. Because there is no code that has the, the lights, uh, maybe one, two, and four? Is there one that has one, two, and four? Nope. Once again, this game is really ridiculous. Leave it to me. Yeah, I never played Othello. The only one that I might be able to say for certain is the last one, because it had one and a one and a two light. And then the four. Seven, four. All right, time to try. Okay, and that's seven, four, three, three. Okay, those those lights don't match up with those numbers. I don't care right now, I'm cheating. I got it, Jago. I just don't see how they get the... I don't see how they get the answer from this. I have no idea how they got this answer. I've never played Othello myself. Those lights make no sense as far as what's going on here. No sense. How do you get 9875 out of those lights? How? I got it. Yes, we're using gimmicks that really is, yeah. I have no idea how you got. How did you, how do you get 9875 out of those lights? It, it makes no sense. For the first one, lights one, three, and four were on. In this one, one and four. I have no idea. 
The second one, only the third light was on. A keyhole again. Did we ever get a key? I believe we've already searched this room from top to bottom. Looks like you need a key. Not like I have a key or anything. What? You do have a key? Nobody should decide that there's only one use for one thing. Alright. Anything more under the bed? No. I wasn't looking at the bed. I was looking at the Monokuma. We had a key and it went away. We're using. Okay. Yeah, number five. Because it looked like a key. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, it looks like we cleared it. <laughs> With our powers combined, we were able to clear the life-threatening game. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Who cares about clearing it? Why does it? Why does the exit feel like it's not opening? Hmm? Huh? What do you mean it won't open? Oh. Are you serious? It's not opening? Didn't I just tell you that? It's not just the exit, even the door we entered from isn't opening. Maybe the game isn't over yet. Is there any chance that the, that thing I found earlier was just joking around? Seems like you have something on your mind. Um, uh, when I first arrived in this room, I received a letter. A letter? I'm sorry. I thought it was just a prank, so I didn't have a chance to tell you. Enough of the excuses. Hurry up and show it to me. Ah, um, uh, yes, it's this. Solve the mystery of the final dead room and you will obtain the right to play the life-threatening game. About the life-threatening game, it's life-threatening roulette. P.S. You are held liable for setting the roulette's difficulty. Depending on the difficulty, I've prepared special prizes, but make sure you don't overdo yourself. Hmm, I see. So that's what it meant. Um. What does it mean? It means the games up until now were just the opening act. From this point on, it's the real performance. Life-threatening roulette. That's probably like Russian roulette. See? A gun came out from there. Which means I have to use that to play Russian roulette, right? Hey. Russian roulette? Then allow me. You can't. No matter what, it's too dangerous. Hey, Monami. There's something I wanted to ask you. In all honesty, I don't really understand the rules of Russian roulette. Oh, yeah, Jago. This is going to be hilarious. If that's the case, load one bullet into the cylinder, then spin it. After that, point the gun toward you and pull the trigger. You can't! Wait, you can't do that. There's a one in six chance you'll die. 
A one in six chance of death, which means the failure rate is only one sixth. Hey, is that rule really okay? Huh? I mean, if there's only a one sixth chance of failing, wouldn't the game be too easy? So shouldn't it be the opposite? Remove one bullet from the gun, then use it while there are still five bullets loaded? If you do that, there will be a one sixth chance of success. Yeah, that would definitely make it a more thrilling game. Yes. What are you saying? Let's give it a go. Oh, God. He is the ultimate lucky student now. Uh, hold on, Nagito. What are you doing? What am I doing? Playing Russian roulette, obviously. I've only removed one bullet. So there's only a one in six chance that I'll survive. You, you can't. Please stop. It's not much of a talent, but even I have an ultimate level talent, you know? I'm the ultimate lucky student. Right. But if I can't win when there's only a one in six chance of success, then what kind of ultimate talent is that? I mean, if my luck gets me killed like this, there's no way you can really call that talent. If I'm truly the ultimate lucky student, I need to survive here. Isn't that right? Please, stop! <laughs> Make sure you yell Persona. Ah, that sound just now. That was the door unlocking, right? That's right. Because he took one bullet out of the chamber. Pulled the trigger, and he won. Okay, so overall, other than that bullshit Othello game, the room was pretty cool. I cheated twice. Again, that Othello one was ridiculous. I would have never got that in a million years. The numbers, if I'd have done, if I'd have stopped and looked and thought about it, I probably could have got that after a little while. But yeah, that Othello thing, I no way in fuck I was ever getting that. Ha, looks like we finally cleared the final dead room. Hey, I'm scared of you, Nagito. Yeah, me too. Hmm, really? Oh, well, let's go. The octagon should be just beyond that door. Holy crap, look at this armory. So this is the octagon, huh? What a distorted room. Congratulations, Nagito. Ooh. He's here? Yeah. Congratulations on clearing the final dead room. And you even challenged yourself at the highest difficulty with only a one-sixth chance of success. Here. I have a modest present for someone like you. Now then, this first. Is this the Future Foundations file? Didn't we already get this when we were at the roller coaster? Well, just think of it as an extension of that. Ooh. Extension? Hey, hey. So, what are you giving without permission? Hmm. Let's see, and one more special prize. Here you go. <sighs> it's the Hope's Peak Academy uh, yearbook. This crest, is this Hope's Peak Academies? <laughs> That's right, this file. It contains your student profiles from your time at Hope's Peak Academy. My goodness. Let me open it. Many of their profiles that you guys don't even remember. Our time at Hope's Peak Academy, huh? But after all this time, I still can't believe it. You mean that matter concerning your stolen school memories? I mean, a no good person like me actually spent time with everyone else at Hope's Peak Academy? No, that's impossible. If that's true, how did I feel? Surely I would have spent my time feeling ashamed of myself for being in the presence of such greatness. Hmm. Jeez, whether you're upbeat or depressed, I still don't understand you at all. Monokuma, get in fucking line. Phew. Oh well, anyway, I'm passing this along to you. How you use it is up to you. Thanks. I'll take a look at I'll take a long look at it later. No, look at it now, mister. So if I look at these profiles, I'll be able to find out what Hajime's hidden talent is, too. They'll probably be happy about it. Yay! Someone like me was finally useful. <laughs> hmm, what are you laughing about? Well, I just thought it was ironic. 
Out of everyone here, someone like you was the one who obtained Hope, Hope's Peak Academy student profile. I'm not sure if you're lucky or unlucky. What does that mean? I'm sure you'll find out when you open the file. But looks like things are going to get interesting. Listen, I still need to find out what the hell happened with Mikan and why she went well loco. Yes, Nagito, you might be the one who makes things much more interesting. I don't really know what you're talking about. Hey, hey. hey what are you planning? What's written in there? Like... Anyway, Monami. Hey, hey. No cheating, you haven't reached the end yet. Hmm? <laughs> I mean, you haven't played Russian Roulette yet. Um... But Nagito already did it. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Get over here. Revenge of the final dead room. No. Coercion. Jeez, they're gone. And then I still don't understand what Monokuma was talking about. But for now, I'll leave this file for later. First, I need to investigate this room. It's not like I know how to get out of here. There's a trap door. A refrigerator here. I wasn't expecting to find drinks in it, but when I opened the door and peeked inside, I see there are poisons stored in here. Oh, fuck. You can secretly kill everyone with poison. In a way, it can be considered the most powerful weapon. But in that case, you have to, you'd have to ignore the rules. Regardless, it's slightly different than an ultimate weapon. Something called ultimate should make my heart dance with joy. I'm not going to check the floor hatch just yet. Axes, swords, hammers, metal wires. There's a lot of items here that could be used as weapons. I don't see anything that looks like it could be the ultimate weapon. I wonder where that so-called ultimate weapon is. Why does something tell me the ultimate weapon is the individual who takes these items. Wow! An RPG! I see, so there are lots of firearms here too. There are handguns and grenade launchers even. I don't see anything that could that looks like it could be the ultimate weapon. I wonder where that so-called ultimate weapon is. A window? Why is there only one window in a place like this? It looks like there's some kind of hidden meaning to it. But in actuality, what could it mean? In my mind, I entertained various possibilities as I walked slowly toward the window. And then the moment I peeked out that window... Huh? This is... What I actually saw outside that window? It was a completely different from any possibility I had in mind. <laughs> oh my god, he's going apeshit. Oh, he's gone off the deep end. I see, so that's what it was. What I saw outside this window, if I start piecing it together and think about it... Yeah, I see. It seems I'm finally starting to get a larger perspective of the fun house with this. <sighs> okay, that's not what I wanted to hear. Let's check this floor hatch. There's a door on the floor! There's a door on the floor! Isn't this the first floor of the strawberry house? Could this door lead underground? Based on the sketch, there shouldn't have been a bunker. No, maybe what lies beyond this door. <laughs> Things are finally getting interesting. Amazing. As expected of a place that cannot be reached unless you clear the final dead room. Thanks to how I arrived here, all the separate pieces seem to have connected together in one fell swoop. A chain reaction culminating in the truth, all thanks to just one clue. <laughs> I know that's not, that now is not the time to enjoy things, but this is definitely a good feeling. Especially that window. That's right, everything became connected from there. Thanks to that window, I finally I realized the mystery of the ultimate weapon and the fawn house. Am I going to be able to see out the window? And all I have to do is tell everyone else about this. But before I do that, I should finally take a look at the file I received from Monokuma. Especially if it's everyone's student profiles from their time at Holmes Peak Academy. That's important. Cautiously opened the file and read it carefully, taking care not to miss a single letter. Carefully? Huh? 
I wonder if Hajime is going to even be listed. Hey. Hey, can you hear me? <gasps> Jackie. Can you hear me? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, did you say something? Well? It's been about two hours since we spoke to Fuihiko. I wonder if the elevator's been fixed yet. It'd be bad if we were still split up before the class trial, so maybe we should call them one more time. Hey, are you even listening? I only brought that up because I'm really worried. Sorry. So what are you going to do? You're right. I'm worried about them too. Let's try calling Strawberry House one more time. I think. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um. Ho hold on. H hold on. What is Nagito doing here? What? Adam, again, you said you played the, the four games, and oh my god, the the first game again had some really trippy moments, but this one is just like on a whole another another level. Huh? Hello there. Well, hello there, Hajime. Nagito, why are you here? <laughs> because I showed up. You showed up? How did you even come here? <laughs> Maybe I teleported. Don't fucking start with this shit. Huh? Nagito said... Nagito said an appearance is a truth bullet? Hey, answer me seriously. How are we able to come to this side? Hey. Before I do that, there's something I need to tell you guys. There is? I tried to investigate Strawberry House as much as I could. Now then. I'll give you those details first. Let's hurry this up. After being abruptly interrupted by Nagito, Chiaki and I learned of the results of his investigation of Strawberry House. Okay. Elevator again? Oh, okay. They're being added to mine. Fuihiko's account. Yep. The clock. Well, I guess these are pretty important. Okay, there it is right there. Gundam. I have a very, very good suspicion that Gundam is the killer. Because it says here, Kazuichi and Gundam rushed to the lounge after being alerted by the sound. Gundam shouldn't have been able to hear it. He was in a soundproof fucking room. Especially the fact that everyone in Strawberry House heard that rumbling noise too. But what was that all what was that about? The wall clock's alarm going off before that happened? Also the fact that Strawberry Hall's button was broken is definitely worth noting. Hey. Also, there's one more thing I need to tell you guys. <laughs> I've cleared the final dead room. Huh? Could it be? You did the life threatening game? Wow. It wasn't life threatening at all. It was just a little escape game that ended with some Russian roulette. Russian roulette? It's a game where you load one bullet in a gun, spin the cylinder, point it towards you, and pull the trigger. So you really did it? Man. Ah, so that's how you're supposed to play it. So it would have been fine if I'd only used one bullet, huh? I guess it was just as Monami said. Huh? Actually. I must have understood and thought that I had to take one bullet out of the cylinder, so that's how I did it. That <laughs> you only had a one in six chance of surviving. Well. But I'm still alive. After all. The only good thing about being me is how lucky I am. What's wrong with him? I knew he was strange from the start, but for him to casually do something so, suicid so suicidal? It's crazy. That's all there is to it. I... Anyway, because I was able to clear the final dead room, I was able to obtain several rights. Now, one of those rights... 
was the freedom to move between Grape House and Strawberry House, huh? Okay. So. That is why there was no issue with going between the two houses. Because whoever the murderer is had to have already cleared the final dead room. And that freedom is grants you the ability to go between the two houses. And of course, that's how they got the hammer. Not only that, but whenever I move back and forth, I don't even need to play the game again. Move back and forth? Where would you even be able to do that? And how? I wonder if it's connected to Sakura's statue. Man. Hey, Hajime. You stay quiet. You've been repeating yourself over and over, and it's bugging me. Can you let me speak freely for a change? Well, then get to the motherfucking point. Huh? <laughs> anyway, I'm definitely lucky. Thanks to that, I was able to clear the roulette at the highest difficulty. And I obtained quite an amazing prize as my reward. That's... Is that the Future Foundation file? Yep. Yeah, it's a continuation of the file we received at the roller coaster. Continuation? There's even more detailed information about the killing school life that was in the earlier file. The killing school life. You mean the killing that took place at Hope's Peak Academy, right? As I recall, Kuya was one of the students who participated in it. <laughs> but even when we learn more about the killing school life, it has no relevance to us whatsoever. There was information about the order of the killings and who the killer was for each incident. I find it extremely boring to read about the deaths of people that I don't even know. Liar. You knew all of them, Makoto. Right. Besides Kuya, of course. It's just as I thought. That Kuya was the Kuya we do, right? But... However, I can't say the information was completely useless. In truth, there are similarities between the killing school life and this killing school trip. Well, yeah, you gotta murder people and you fucking have a class trial with Monokuma. Similarities? Um... For example, the first murder involved someone important getting stabbed to death in an unexpected place. That was Kuya. He was someone important, and he got stabbed to death in an unexpected place. That, that, uh, um, the old house. Hey. The second murder revealed the presence of a serial killer among the group. Right? Again, that's what I thought with Pecco. <laughs> and the third murder was actually two killings that happened in succession. And yeah, that was the last one with Ibuki and Hiyoko. Hey. What do you guys think about these strange similarities? But the problem was in the fourth one, the person committed suicide. It's definitely strange. Well. I can't think of these as coincidences, especially if Monokuma is behind the motives and driving the murders. What are you trying to say? Hey. By the way, the fourth murder of the killing school life was apparently ruled a suicide. Yes. Our girl, Sakura. Huh? <laughs> Whether it means something or not is something each person should think about on their own. I just wanted to tell you guys the truth. The truth? Are you sure you're not just trying to confuse us? Jeez, your complaints just never end, do they? If you're gonna talk like that, I won't. Uh, I won't want to tell you anymore. And I even learned what your talent is too. Huh? Well. Well, that file wasn't the only one I received from Monokuma. This is another one. That seal. Yep. Indeed, it's the Hope Peak Academy School Crest. Perhaps. Does that have information about our stolen memories? How unfortunate. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any clues about that. This file doesn't contain our information, just Hajime's information. Really? Just mine? Why? Isn't that weird? Why only Hajime's information? Jeez. It's quite troubling that you would ask me that. 
I must say, it was always interesting that Hajime was the only one who couldn't remember his talent. Right. But that ends now. You serious? Did you really find out why I was chosen by Hope's Peak Academy? Man. In a way, it's just as Chiaki said. Hajime's existence is special. Because you were... Just some reserve course student from the reserve department. The reserve department. Didn't we learn about that in the first game, towards the end? Didn't we learn about the reserve department? Huh? Well... Unlike the primary department for main course students who possess ultimate talents, the reserve department is for reserve course students who enter the school through a basic entrance exam. Essentially, you're like a substitute or the second string. You're the backups. Well, even then, that's just the name only. The reserve department pretty much only exists to increase Hope's Peak Academy's revenue stream. Reserve department. So he doesn't have an ultimate talent. He's just a student. Substitute. Second string. Revenue stream. What is he saying? <laughs> like I said, to be a reserve course student, you don't need to possess an ultimate talent. You just have to pay a rather costly entrance fee in tuition. He's just a normie. He's a muggle. Damn. He's a squib. With the funds obtained from these exams, the Academy can focus on bolstering and researching talent. Through this, the symbols of hope can be raised. Isn't that right? Which means you're just a stepladder, but you should feel honored. An average talentless human can be put to good use for those who are known as mankind's hope. The hell does that mean? Perhaps you simply weren't determined enough. Did you admire hope? Were you willing to sacrifice your body and soul to attend Hope Speak Academy? Or maybe you were just obsessed with Hope's Peak Academy like a fangirl following the latest trend. It's not like that, I... Stop it. Wanted to become Hope. If that's what you're thinking, just stop it. Listen carefully. The only humans worthy of becoming Hope possess amazing talents and a strong will. And the moment you're born into this world, you either have that or you don't. There's no mistake. It has nothing to do with effort. You must be chosen by Hope to become Hope. You don't even know? That's why it's not even worth admiring. <laughs> Fucking Nagito is getting harsh. Or were you so blinded by your admiration for Hope's Peak Academy that you couldn't even see that? Ugh. You're just some nobody from the reserve course who had never had a talent to begin with. A nobody who forgot he was a nobody, that's all. Wow. Nagito is cutting deep. Then I, I'm just... <laughs> that's right. You were never an ultimate. You had no talent whatsoever. I don't have any talent. I'm just an ordinary high school student. Man. Uh, I feel sorry for you. Are you shocked to learn that you were the only one who didn't have a talent? That's not it. But still, if you think about it positively, it looks like there's no more reason to doubt you. Now that we know who you are, a normal, average, utterly unremarkable high school student, <laughs> there's no way you could be associated with the Future Foundation. But if it's not Hajime, then who in the world could the traitor be? I'd laugh my ass off if it was Chiaki. The survivor of the previous killing school life, Kuya, would have been the most likely candidate. But now that's probably impossible. Hey. Are you listening? Hold it. There's no need for you to listen to this. What? Huh? Well? It may be important to talk about who the traitor is, but we need to focus on Mekamaru's murder first. Because if we can't survive the class trial, everyone is going to die together anyway. Hmm. In that case, would the traitor be amongst those killed as well? That's something I truly wonder about. Yep. Oh, well, it's fine. I'll stop for now. Hey, hey. You said you cleared the final dead room and obtained these files. That means you must have gone to the octagon, right? Hey. You curious about the ultimate weapon? So... Did you find out what it was? The ultimate weapon is probably knowledge. 
Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Is there any reason I should answer that? Huh? What the hell? <laughs> I'm the one who cleared that room, and I'm free to divulge any clues I obtained there as I see fit, right? Oh my fucking god. Really? You planning to keep it a secret? You planning to decide to kill her again? Man. Like I said, I'm not on the killer side. This hasn't changed since the beginning. How many times must I repeat myself? I just want hope to shine even brighter. Mm. What you're saying doesn't make any sense at all. Just tell us already. Tell us about the ultimate weapon. Jeez. Jeez, I guess I have no choice. I suppose I can tell you one little tidbit. I... You're right. I did go to a place that seemed to be the octagon, and I found many different weapons there. But I didn't find anything worthy of the name Ultimate Weapon. Don't lie, there's no way that's possible. Again, the ultimate weapon is knowledge. Stop it. Coming from someone with no talent like yourself, that's truly offensive. Oh, he's gonna throw this in our face every goddamn time now, huh? Is that how it's gonna be? See? You still gonna defend him? What did you say? Oh. Fine, I understand. Now's not the time for us to be fighting anyway. If you won't tell us, we gotta do it ourselves. Now, shall we get back to investigating Mechamaro's case? You better hurry. The class trial is going to start soon. You're right. I haven't seen the crime scene. Also, the guys in Strawberry House should be coming over to this side any moment now. Bye now. Then while we're at it, I'll go on ahead. Hey. Hey, how's your It's okay. I already know. You want me to focus on Nekomaro's case right now, right? It's true that I'm shocked, but now's not the time for me to feel like that. Right now, I can't afford to be the only one who's depressed. Uh, I need to survive with everyone else and return home. That's what's most important. Isn't that right? Yep. I'm relieved to hear that. We should get moving then. Yeah, you, you're right. You're right. I should just forget about it for now. I need to focus on Nekomaro's case. Uh-huh. Wall clock is not suspicious about it. Okay. I have returned from the depths of hell. Got him. Yo. Sorry we're late. Hey. Just so you all know, it's all thanks to me. I'm the one who fixed the elevator. <laughs> See, it's just as I said, right? Hey, hey. Hey, you listen to me? I'm trying to stand out here. Yeah, what's wrong with our pet? Huh. It's cocooning again. Hey. More importantly, Kazuichi, did you look into that matter I asked you about? Huh? Huh? Oh, the thing about the compass? I looked in, I looked into it while I was coming here, but I think this compass might be broken. You stay quiet. I didn't ask for your opinion, just tell me the results. Wow, he's getting fucking sassy now. <laughs> huh? Well Compass needle rotated 180 degrees while we were riding the elevator. The needle rotated 180 degrees. Okay. So basically, it went from this to this. So the door is the same. And all you do is you go in the door, it rotates, and then you go out. <laughs> so it doesn't move. It just spins. Just as I thought. Huh? Hey, what do you mean by that? Well, well obviously, nice. the elevator most likely rotated 180 degrees. The elevator rotated. Now then, I should go investigate Nekomaro's body. As if we were thumbing his nose at us, Nagito began making his way toward Grape Tower. Oh my. Hell's wrong with him? Doesn't he seem pissed off or something? Nagito, what do you know? How much do you know? Because he reaches a count. As soon as I came over here, I checked this first, but it looks like the panel was definitely forced open. The elevator panel? Hey. Uh, um, it might be better if I explain how the elevator was broken, huh? No, I heard the gist of it from Nagito. The they broke the elevator by tampering with the safety device, right? Right. Uh, looks like word travels fast. Check out that panel over there. Just as I thought. It looks like they forced open the panel and changed the settings by tampering with the safety device. Definitely looks like the panel was forced open. Which means the elevator was broken at Grape House. 
But again... <laughs> I just repaired the elevator. Do you seriously want to ride it already? Hold it. Let's do that later. Right now it looks like Nagito is investigating Macamaro's case. Definitely worried about what he's searching for. We gotta get and check... We have to check out his chest. Yeah, check out his clock. <laughs> I've made you wait. Judgment. The time has come to destroy all murderous illusions. I don't trust you, Gundam. Don't trust you one bit. Hey, hey. I guess the Gato is luckily a tardy detective. I guess it's like a tardy detective. What are you talking about? See? It's a trope in mystery games. They always come to the crime scene late just to make an important discovery. But they can never reach the truth of the case. They just end up feeding the main character assumptions. Yep. Well, in Nagito's case, he's not the type to feed anyone. He'll just make things even more complicated. It's true. He's such a troublesome person. But lately, I feel like he's been acting weirder than usual. Well? I don't think a new discovery is bad, though. He might be able to find something we completely overlooked. Yes, we have to look at Nekomaru's clock. Damn right. Clock. I said clock. Nekomaru should be in Grave Tower. Yep. I'll go on ahead. We were a little late. Where am I going? I love how the Monokumas show up and tell you to move. Are you serious? Oh, Dekomaro, are you serious? I don't know who did this, but this is pretty fucked up. Hey. Now it's not time to get sentimental. Come on, we need to hurry up and investigate. We've already investigated everything we can here. Wow. There you have it. There's still something you should be able to investigate more thoroughly. Now that Makan is no longer with us, we can't perform an autopsy. But he's a robot, so we wouldn't need to perform an autopsy. Right. But Kazuichi should be able to disassemble the body, right? Huh? Eh? It cannot be. Is that true? Are you going to disassemble Nekomaro's body? I won't forgive you. Oh, screw with me. Hasn't Coach Nekomaro been through enough already? You don't know? Been through enough? We need to perform this investigation so we can find out who the killer is. Or perhaps you don't want to know, Akane. Maybe you don't care about what happened to Nekomaro. D damn it! Why you? You stay quiet. If you suck at using your brain and you really want to know that who the killer is, try not to interfere so much. Wow, yeah, he's getting really ballsy. He's annoyed me from the beginning, but it's, now it's even getting worse. Uh -huh. Jeez. Come on, Kazuichi, what are you standing there for? Uh. Damn it, fine. I just have to do it, right? I know I said I wanted to see his insides, but not like this. This is just too much. <laughs> the Red Pony, welcome into the stream. Hope you're doing well. Welcome. Nice to have you. And yeah, uh, again, Nagito has made this game a little unbearable. And it, now it's only gotten worse. Um, he was uh, the reason I almost quit this game after the first case. With all the crap he pulled at the first trial. I just wanted to throw my controller at him and say to hell with this game because I'm not going to deal with it. Then I got uh, I got connected with Makan and she became my favorite. And now she's dead. Uh. <laughs> and Jago keeps having to have having to talk me down. Yes, Makan was my favorite. Uh. This is my first playthrough of the game, so I have no idea what happened to her why she went loco other than obviously the despair disease so I'm very interested to find out what happened and who her you know her favorite significant other or something was who never picked on her or anything but uh, how many of the uh, how many of the dang and rampa games have you played red pony well <sighs> come on you guys feeling okay too now's not the time to be staring into space 
Nikita, there's definitely something wrong with you. Malix, welcome into the stream. Hope you're doing well today. Thank you for stopping by. You played the first two? Again, I did play the first one. Uh, I did stream it. Um, the, uh, the VODs are over on my YouTube channel under the same name. So if you care to uh, check out how I did with Trigger Happy Havoc. Or uh, I do have Persona 5 Royal and Persona 4 Golden on there if you care to check it out. You're more than welcome to. <laughs> I am doing well, Malix. And thank you, Red Pony. You're familiar with all of them. But yes, and I, I do appreciate everybody that's coming in um, is being respectful and not giving away spoilers. Um, I just went through the dead room, you know, the final dead room with, with uh, Nagito there. And I had to cheat twice. Once I probably, and both of them were the number codes. Right. I mean, there are some people who spoil just for the sake of spoiling. There are some who are trying to be helpful and don't realize they're spoiling. So, especially for story heavy games. Exactly. Again, if you're not familiar with Persona 5 or Persona 5 Royal, I've played, I have over 700 hours in Persona 5 Royal. I'm currently streaming Persona 5 Vanilla. I'm on the New Game Plus version. I have about over 200 hours in that. So, you know, I'm very aware that if somebody is playing Persona 5 for the first time, whether it's Vanilla or Royal, there are some really, really good plot twists and and good story moments that happen and I make sure that I don't comment until after the event happens because obviously you know there's some really good stuff that goes on but as far as this goes again Nagito makes this game unbearable but I'm interested to see what happens with Bakan and how we're going to get the hell out of here so but I appreciate everybody stopping in I appreciate everybody you know coming in and saying hi and enjoying my playthrough and enjoying me getting frustrated at this game. Especially, again, with the final dead room with him, the first save code. Uh, I'll get to that in a second, Malix. Um, again, the, the final death room, the first save code, I would have gotten if I'd have paid it a little more attention. As far as the second one with the Othello, never would have got. Not in a million years. Not in a million years. Now, as far as the ultimate weapon, I believe the ultimate weapon is knowledge. Knowledge, I mean, again, depending on who you talk to, I know there's like some cliche um, sayings out there, but knowledge is your greatest weapon. So when Nagito looked out that window and got his little aha moment, which I have no idea, Jago, thank you for gifting a, a, a sub to the Red Pony. Welcome in. Welcome into the crew. You now have those fun Final Fantasy IV emotes. You have that nice chocobo. And Malix, Jago being very, very generous. Jago is very generous. He, uh, he He's here quite a bit. He does give quite a few gifted subs. So Jago... Or, Jago, thank you very much. Again, I appreciate it. The Red Pony and Malix, welcome into the crew. Enjoy those fun Final Fantasy IV emotes. And your fun sub badges there with your chocobo. But, uh... <laughs> See, I'd like Red Pony. I, I'd like puzzles. They're fun. Um, I've done a couple escape rooms myself. But... Again, the first number puzzle where the six was actually a nine. If I'd have really paid attention, I saw the line. I know what it means. I just didn't click with me. As far as the second number with the Othello, never, never would have gotten it. Never in a million years because none of the num flashing lights matched up with anything that I saw. So that being said, yes, I do believe the ultimate weapon gained was knowledge. So, we'll see where that goes from here. Thought he was just treating me differently ever since he found out I have no talent, but... 
Seems that's not the entirely. All right, I'm starting to get a little warm over here, so I'm going to put my fan back on rotate. So you may hear a breeze blowing against the mic every now and then. Uh, his attitude toward everyone else is strange now, too. Again, because he knows how the fun house is set up. Because he looked out that window. But why? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Necromorph's body. All right, I gotta talk to, to Soto. Damn it! But come so far. There's no way I can get sentimental the sentimental at a time like this. I feel awful for Mac Nekomaro, but this is necessary if we're gonna find out the truth behind this case. As he forced out his voice through the, his clenched teeth, Kazuichi faced Nekomaro, his eyes full of determination, and began stabbing his tool knife into Nekomaro's body. Huh? Where did you get that tool knife? Yeah. Huh? Makoto gave it to us. He, he said he had it ready before we even went to the amusement park. So Nagito did that too. It's like Nagito has full control of the situation. The Red Pony, thank you for the follow. Really appreciate it. Maybe. Normally it's the other way around, but again, Jago is very generous and he throws out uh, subs when he can. So thank you very much. Looks like the damage to his head is the reason. Huh? The reason Nekomaro died. I mean, stopped functioning. His torso is covered in huge dents, and his parts are dislocated. Hmm, maybe a gear shaft broke too? Well, for now, I try, uh, for now I try disassembling Nekomaru's chest. That should help us learn something, right? Yes, his clock. When did his clock stop? If that's the case, I need to look at Nekomaru's body one more time. I'm sure once we hit this... Uh, uh, Kazuichi has finished disassembling Nekomaru's body. should probably check it out. Yes. Nekomaru's chest panel is open. The clock inside is completely exposed. The hands of the clock look like they're pointing to 730. Well, that can't be right. Also, it looks like the clock's alarm was set for 730 a.m. Which means this clock broke the moment the alarm started ringing at 730 a.m. Clock's alarm timer has been added. But 7.30 a.m. is strange, isn't it? I mean, we should have arrived at Grape Tower just before 7 a.m. for Monokuma Tai Chi. Is this clock malfunctioning? No, it can't. This is a highly efficient radio clock. Yep. The type of clock receives radio signals. I wonder if the radio... I don't know, maybe the radio clock did stop getting signals in the funhouse? Yeah, this is just repeat stuff, so I'm not going to read it. Never slows down. Even if it's an accurate clock, they didn't need to install it and say, yeah, huh? I don't need to wear a wristwatch ever again. Yep. An accurate radio clock that never slows down, huh? If that's the case, why does this broken clock say 7.30 a.m.? Radio clock. But it doesn't really say 7.30 a.m. Or does it say 7.30 p.m.? Yeah. What's wrong with him? He's crouching over Nekomaru's body. And it almost seems like he's glaring at him. What's up, Nagito? You're the worst. Jeez, this is the worst. Huh? Jeez. You guys overlooked an important clue. I swear you're just the worst. As I thought, there's no way I can leave this to you guys. Oh my god, he's becoming a pain in my ass. What are you talking about? Well, I found this under a fragment of the pillar that tipped over. Is this a doorknob? You don't even know? Looks like the screws came out with it. That wouldn't happen unless you applied a ton of force to it. Did Neko Maro... <laughs> yeah. You're the worst. Did Nekomaru commit suicide? Th that wouldn't have uh, wouldn't happen unless you applied a ton of force to it. Plus, it looks like there are scratches near the base of the doorknob. Hey. No, that's wrong. 
Don't you think it's strange? Well, yeah, because See? both doorknobs are there. If we examine the far back door in Grape Tower, the doorknob is still intact, right? Not you mentioned it. You, you, you're right. You're right. Now then. If that's the case, where did this doorknob come from? If it's not the door that leads to Strawberry Hall, then there's only one other possibility. The other door. It'd have to be the door connected to Grape Hall that we entered from, right? Well, well it makes sense to think about it like that. <laughs> we should try it out. How? Yeah, the door's not going to close. You don't know? We take the elevator to Strawberry House and we enter the Strawberry Tower from Strawberry Hall. But the door is chained and the buttons broke. That's the only way we can see the other side of that door, right? But the button to open the door in Strawberry Hall is broken, right? It's obvious. We can just repair it. After all, we have the ultimate mechanic on our side. Damn it, stop making Soda be helpful. That's the other thing. In addition to Nagito being my least favorite character, I've wanted Soda to be killed or die from the beginning of the game because he annoyed me. <laughs> and again, Chago is always getting on my case. <laughs> well. well, you're right, but I need parts to repair the door in Strawberry Hall. I can repair it if it's broken, but if I don't have enough parts, there's not much I can do about it. <laughs> but you have plenty of parts right here. Are you seriously suggesting he uses Nekomaru's parts to fix the door? Huh? See? Just use Nekomaru. I'm sure if you dig through his body, you can find parts you can use. Hold on. Are you saying we should use parts from our dead friend? Oh. There's that face. It's called recycling. It's a much better alternative than disposing it with the rest of the junk, right? Oh. He is just freak. He, he's freaking the fuck out. Really is. It's, it's scary. Junk? Hey. Well, Kazuichi, is it possible or impossible? Yeah, again, Jago, the eyes. They're all wonky. Like you said, I could probably use these parts to repair that button, but... Seriously, hold on. Even if you do repair the button, what's going to happen to the chain on the on the other side of the door? Huh? Chain? The door that leads to Strawberry Hall has a chain wrapped around the doorknob. Even if you fix the button on the Strawberry Hall side, that door won't open as long as that chain is there. You don't need to worry about uh, about that at all. Huh? I don't need to worry. What does that mean? Now then. Kazumichi, we should go over to Strawberry Hall so you can repair the door. Hey, I'm not finished. <laughs> Hajime, you're going to come later too, right? It'd really be bothersome if you didn't. I mean, if there's someone in the tower, the door won't open at all. Right. So you should at least make sure you're not pulling my leg. After tersely saying that, Nagito left the area. Broken doorknobs and added to the truth bullets. Huh? What the hell happened to him? He seems on edge about something. Oh, absolutely, he knows He knows something. He knows a lot of things. And again... The chain... Um, again, I'm thinking the chain on the door is Nekomaru's chain. Because he used to have a chain around his neck and now he doesn't. I'm wondering if Nekomaru committed suicide so that his friends can eat. Similar to the way Sakura committed suicide because she felt betrayed. Um, Nekomaru committed suicide to help his friends out. That's a possibility. Hmm. <sighs> Who knows? Damn right. Oh, that reminds me. Dagito asked Kazuichi to do something weird for him, right? Yep. It has something to do with how the elevator spins 180 degrees. I wonder what it could mean. Oh, uh, yeah, just like Sakura. Hey. Actually, to tell you the truth, Nagito asked me to do something weird, too. He told me to investigate all the clocks inside both buildings. The clocks? I... So he did what he said and checked them all, but none of the clocks had their times messed up. Jeez. But why'd he ask me to do that in the first place? I don't get that bastard at all. Yes, Sakura, uh, again, for those that weren't here, 
um, the way Sakura died and the reasoning behind it that she gave um, hit very, very close to home because I experienced something similar. Where individuals I thought I could trust uh, betrayed me and backstabbed me. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I broke down on stream that day. Uh, the results of which you can see on the VODs on my YouTube channel. Uh, for now, why don't we head over to Strawberry Tower 2. Along with the doorknob manor, there are still many mysteries surrounding this that we don't understand. If we go to Strawberry Tower, we might be able to solve some of those mysteries. Maybe. Jeez, you're Looks pathetic. like that's all we can do. Let's head over. You, you're right. You're right. When Nagito said about the door opening, what is he planning to do about the chain? Something tells me the chain's not going to matter. Looks like it won't come off easily, so does Nagito have a plan or something? Jeez, I don't understand this at all. Yep, there's our girl. And again, it's kind of fitting that her death was the fourth case and here we are we finally get her in the fourth case and I had forgotten that Yasuhiro used to call her Ogre Jago had to remind me of that come on everybody thanks to Kazuichi the elevator is working now alright let's go so again I think we get in and then the elevator just does the 180. We walked into the elevator and made our way to Strawberry House. Oh, the pink. It's been a while since I've come to Strawberry House. What's up? Hey, you're here. Hey, hey. Kazuichi, how'd the repairs go? <laughs> yeah, well, the damage wasn't too bad once I got the parts, so I was able to fix it right away. You? You got a lot of nerves saying that what you used Nakamura's parts without... Saying that when you use Nekomaru's parts without my permission. Hey, hey. Well, I mean, so even so. Now then. Anyway, now that we're all here, why don't we hurry up and try it out? What will happen if you press the button to Strawberry Hall's door? Even so. But there's no way it'll open. You haven't done anything about the chain. Hey. The door to Strawberry Hall behind Nekomaru's body was blocked off by that chain. Remember? If you didn't do anything about that, it doesn't even matter if you fix the button on the outside. <laughs> well, we'll know if we try it out. Yeah. It's not even worth trying out. No, no, Akane. Everything is worth trying. No, nope, we've all come this far. If he's saying we should try it out, then we should give it a shot. Yep. Yeah, that'd be great. <sighs> Alright, as much as I like to chat with everybody, I'm going to go right here. You. I am sussing you right now. There's no way the door will open, not when the other side is chained up. With a feeling of resignation, I press the button. Yep. Huh? Hey, hey. Why did it open? Impossible. Where did the chain go? Hold it. Hold on a second, that's not the only thing that's strange. That's right. There's no other way to say it. This definitely looks weird. What do you mean, huh? Look at where Nekomaro's body is. Hey, hey! Hey, does this all look the same when we were in Grape Tower? Yeah, you're right. When we were inside Grape Tower, Nekomaro's, Nekomaro's body was in front of the far back door. Which means his body should be in front of the door to Strawberry Hall. So if he entered from Strawberry Hall, his body should be right in front of the door as he walked in. Why isn't it like that? Why is Nekomaru's body in front of the door to Grape Hall? Hey, hey. Not just that, the parts that I carefully arranged when I disassembled the body are all moved too. What? There's this chain under him now. The body isn't the only thing that's moved, even the tipped over pillar and the spilled oil. They all move the exact same way. 
The crime scene looks identical to how we saw it when we entered from Grape Hall. Everything that was at the crime scene inside Grape Tower shifted to the opposite side. As if it all rotated 180 degrees, right? I can't imagine that the floor actually rotated 180 degrees, but... Is that really what this means? I don't think it does. to think how the same the elevator rotates 180 degrees but how would the towers you know how would the tower rotate 180 degrees these are all good questions Jago I honestly have no idea. But remember, Nagito looked out that window. So he knows. Remember, when he looked out the window, he said he now knows how the setup of the found house goes. So he knows exactly where the towers are, where the houses are, and why and why there would be no concern about the chain being on the door. No, it's more than that. I feel like there's an even greater mystery here. A mystery so great that it could drastically affect the outcome of the case. We might have to rethink this, because look at the door. There's no chain on the door, but the one handle is broken. He's, uh, we might need to fundamentally rethink how we've been approaching this case. Strange feeling in the tower has been added to the truth bullets. Chain has been updated. I see. The chain disappeared. The strange feeling I felt when I went back and forth between the two towers. <laughs> Yep, just as I thought. It was definitely the right choice to confirm this. Just as you thought. Did you already knew about this mystery? You have a bad habit of relying on others when you don't understand. Why don't you try investigating first? Oh, you motherfucker. Yes, the fun house is definitely an interesting one. See? That door at the far back with the picture of a grape on it. Maybe there's a clue hidden there. There's a clue on that door? It's the door with the picture of grapes on it. This should lead to Grape Hall. Wait. One of the doorknobs is gone. It's like the screws came out with it. Now then. It's the same as that doorknob that was on the floor. See? The screws came out with it, right? Then the doorknob next to Nekomaru's body came off the door to Grape Hall. Whoa. Well, that's what it looks like. When you said clue, were you talking about this? What is it a clue to? Broken doorknob isn't updated. What? Huh? Did you get even more confused? <laughs> no need to worry. Just one clue will change everything. Huh? All the mysteries will be solved as if everything were linked together if you can reach it. Just like I did. What does that mean? I have a feeling that as soon as I hit this button, we're going to hear the ding dong bing bong. Even though I asked him that, Nagito probably won't give me an answer. So it'd just be a waste of time to ask. Investigation time is over. It appears that it's time for the class trial. To tell you the truth, I'm tired. 
Extremely tired. I feel like spending the rest of my life hibernating already. Man, I know it's bad, but I'm so sleepy. I just want to ditch. <sighs> Though I really don't feel like it. I'll show you my serious side when you come to the class trial. Even though it's impossible since it's so annoying, you can count on me to take this seriously. Looks like it's gonna start. Another class trial. Hey, hey! But how are we supposed to get to the trial ground? Damn it! You're right, we can't do anything unless we get out of this building. Hmm. Um. Akane, did something happen? Hey, hey! No, well, do you guys hear something? Hear something? Hey, hey! What did you hear this time? Suddenly, as if cutting off Chiaki, our surroundings started to shake and rumble. And then it suddenly appeared before us. Holy crap. Is he telling us to go inside from here? Seems that way. Alright, All right, I'm gonna go. Just hold on, Nekomaru. I'll make sure I avenge you. Jeez, you're At least be a little cautious. It's obviously a trap. It appears you cannot escape. I agree. I detect the scent of danger. Even my familiars are saying, do not go inside. It's nearly showtime! How interesting. If you can kill me, you're welcome to try. Try stabbing your sword through my very heart. Uh, hello, Marsh. Welcome in. Yeah, Nekomaru's body just went... Now then, we shall get moving as well. Yep. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh. You're right. It's annoying, but if Masoni is going, there's no way I'm not going to. I'm not going to go. No, I'm not going to go. Damn it. Oh, but it's so damn annoying. I guess it doesn't matter if it's a trap or not. One by one, everyone went into Monokuma Rock. Yes, Marshy will be triggered again. Until I was the only one left, and when I was about to take a step forward... We're the same. The same step ladders. Huh? Nagito was suddenly standing next to me with his eyes locked onto Monokuma Rock. Other than the small movements of his mouth, he was perfectly still. Wow. You and I are just step ladders. For everyone who holds the title of ultimate. I always believed that I didn't mind. Unlike you, I know my place. What are you saying? Man. That's why I was prepared to become a sacrifice at any time, and from that, true hope would be born. I always believed that the talent that survived would be true hope. Damn it. But it wasn't. There is no hope amidst all this killing. Of course there isn't. What kind of hope comes from killing people? What? Hmm, really? Are you suggesting that sacrificing others for hope isn't real hope? But you're wrong. It's only natural and extremely obvious that strong hope devours weak hope. Isn't that right? After all, that's what it means to live, right? There's no way I'm going to accept that. This fucking dude is confusing the fuck out of me. Marsh, be nice. Don't make me have to time you out. Well. Oh, well, it's not like that. It's what I wanted to say to you anyway. Hey. There's just one novel I like. It's a peculiar mystery story. Huh? A novel? The story is told from the point of view of a high school girl involved in a serial killer mystery. But when you get to the end, <laughs> surprise, surprise, the girl was actually the killer. Of course, the story is written carefully so the reader doesn't learn the ending in the middle of the story. The protagonist is just a projection of the reader, and this projection turns out to be the killer. Which means the killer you were looking for the whole time was inside you all along. Marsh, I am very glad that you're feeling happy today. How do you feel about novels like that? What the heck are you talking about? You're just jumping from one topic to another. And I can't comment on a book that I've never read before. No good at all. Such a normal answer. I should have expected that from a talentless reserve course student like you. Oh, fuck you. 
<laughs> but I know that you don't matter at all, so why do I care about you? You admire hope. I love hope. Right. In some ways we're similar, but maybe that difference is what's making me so emotional. Enough already. I agreed. I don't have time to argue with you. Let's go. Everyone is waiting. Man. Everyone, huh? So you still believe you're just like everyone else. <laughs> Reserve Corps students are so full of themselves. Nagito's chilling laugh continued as he disappeared into Monokuma Rock. Calm down. That's right. I need to calm down. I took several deep breaths, and once my nerves had settled, I stepped into Monokuma Rock. Uh, some weird shit happened, Marsh. Very weird shit. <sighs> the elevator shook violently as it descended in an ever-increasing speed. Hey. When we're in a normal elevator that shakes this is bad, it reminds me of how efficient that elevator in the funhouse was. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's probably true. The elevator continued to shake. It descended deeper and deeper. And suddenly, it stopped, like it always does. Yeah, this this ga these games, these Danganronpa games, unfortunately take more brains than brawn, Marsh. There's more thinking than fighting in these. And the door opened. Wow! I understand your desire to applaud this wonderfully vulgar trial ground. But it's so exhausting to discuss unless they let's discuss useless things. So let's just get on with it already. Yeah, no, I didn't play Othello. I played Tappy Tap on my phone to get the damn answer because that was ridiculous. Ugh, so sad, my chest hurts. Forcing everyone to do this is so sad. Hey, come hey, on hey. Now. Don't go talking without permission after I've said my catchphrase. Now I'm really angry. Otherwise, I'll roll a dice and based on the result, I'll give you a sex change operation that many times. Oh my god. What an extreme punishment. Now then. Let's get on with it once again. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get a move on, boys and girls. So it begins. I hope this would never happen again, and now it's happening for the fourth time. The curtain of the fourth class trial was about to open. Nekomaru Nidai, the ultimate team manager. He was more passionate more daring, more honest than anyone I'd ever met. Truly, he was more man than any of us. He sacrificed his body to protect Akane, and his appearance changed drastically because of that. But he still tried to live earnestly. And just when I finally got used to his new form, Nekomaru's killer is one of us. There's my girl on the first page. Dead. Killing someone because it's the only way to survive is no excuse. This is a very bloody page. Again, if Nekomaru didn't kill himself, I'm thinking about Gundam. Because he should not have heard that alarm going off in the soundproof room. I won't let this be excused. I won't forgive this. The person who betrayed Nekomaru, who betrayed their friends, I will never, ever forgive them. And so, this life-threatening trial billowing with hope and despair. Yes, it does remind you of an all-out attack page. Again, yes, Molox, I do suspect Gundam. And I'll, I'll go through it because I always go through the truth bullets before I start has begun. Yes, I'd like to save my current progress. Now, before we get into the trial, I do have to make a potty break. So, I will be right back. Wrong screen.
Okay. I feel better now. Alright. Six skills. We only got one new skill. Open the handbook. So, for our truth bullets, we have the Monokuma file. The victim is Nekomaru Nadai, aka Mekamaru, after his robotic transformation. His body was discovered in Great Tower, which is inside the funhouse. His head is severely damaged and beyond repair, so that should be considered the cause of death. Despite the fact that his arms and legs are dismembered, these limbs are actually designed to be detachable, and it seems they separated due to a severe impact. Aside from that, several other areas of his body are damaged. Be uh, because of this, many of his functions seem to have shut down. Necromaro's body and left leg were tied with a metal wire. The tip of that wire was also tied into a loop. Again, I'm thinking that loop was tied to... Um, I'm thinking that loop was tied to the, uh, the door handle. A button on the back of Nekomaru's neck. When this button is pressed, all of Nekomaru's functions cease and he is forced to enter sleep mode. I don't remember if Nekomaru was able to push his little night-night button by himself. Because if that's the case, he could have hung himself from the button around the pillar and then he'd push his own night-night button. He'd just like flop and, and die. Oil that was flowing out of Nekomaru's body. The majority of it came from his fatal head wound. Uh, one of the pillars on the side of the door was tipped over. The damaged area of the pillar was also stained. It was so heavy that even two people couldn't budge it. An enormous hammer found on the floor of the tower. It was completely clean, almost as if it was brand new. Again, I don't think this hammer was used at all in the murder. Or the death, I should say, not murder, because it's possible he committed suicide. A chain was wrapped around the handles of the door at the back of Grape Tower. For some reason, the killer was able to enter the tower from Strawberry Hall. Apparently, Akane heard a rumbling noise at around 5.30 a.m., which is corroborated. A lot of small pieces of stone were scattered underneath Nekomaru's body. However, there were no fragments on top of his body. Which, again, which would indicate it wasn't suicide, because if he fell and then the pillar fell, there should be some uh, fragments on top. Uh, apparently, Fuihiko saw Nekomaro walk toward the first floor of Strawberry House at 5 a.m. At 5.30 a.m., the alarm of the wall clock in the lounge of the Strawberry House's second floor started going off. Fuihiko was at the lounge by a coincidence and managed to stop the alarm. But Kazuichi and Gundam rushed to the lounge after being alerted by the sound. However, Nagito was apparently the only one who didn't hear it. That is why I am sus of Gundam. Because Gundam and Nagito were in the deluxe rooms. And those rooms, according to Monokuma, are soundproof. So how did Gundam know to run out at 5.30. How did he hear that if he was in, you know, if he's in his room? The contact elevator used to move between both houses was broken and no longer worked. It was apparently broken at the Grape House side, so the last person to use it would have arrived at Grape House. The button in Strawberry Hall that opens the door leading to the tower was broken. Nagita was supposed to be at Strawberry House, but he appeared at Grape House via some unknown method. The contact elevator should have been broken. Apparently the compass's needle spun 180 degrees while it was inside the contact elevator. What's up, Gamma? Welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Yes. Um, it was Fuihiko, Nekomaru, Kazuichi, Nagito, and Gundam. There were five over in Strawberry House. Nagito and Gundam had the deluxe rooms. Nekomaro had the standard room. And Kazuichi and Fuihiko had the crappy rooms. <laughs> I 
<laughs> That's fine, Red Pony. Again, there are times during these trials where I'm completely lost, and I will, you know, I will phone a friend and ask and pull the audience. But uh, I try and figure it out myself at first. But I have a very poor track record. I believe in almost all the cases in Trigger Happy Havoc, I got an A. For the first three cases in this, I've gotten a B. I do not like the panic talk action. The logic dive is horrible. The um, hangman's gambit isn't too bad. Um, but yeah, they're horrible. And apparently the compass's needle spun 180 degrees while it was inside the contact elevator. Nekomaru used this alarm clock to recover from sleep mode. The clock's arms are stopped at around 7.30, and the alarm was set to 7.30 as well. <laughs> uh, the clock in Nekomaru's chest receives radio waves at fixed intervals and automatically adjusts itself if its time is off. Basically, it's an amazingly precise clock that can't be tampered with, not even to set the time. A doorknob found under the tipped over pillar. The screws at the base are pulled out and there are some scratch marks on the knob itself. One of the doorknobs from the far back of the strawberry house was missing, so this doorknob was originally attached to that door. <laughs> uh, regardless of whether you enter the tower from Grape Hall or Strawberry Hall, the placement of Nekomaru's body, the tipped over pillar, the oil stains and even the disassembled parts Kazuichi arranged look exactly the same. Again, there's there is something definitely going on with that. And that's all. That's what we got. Now I don't it's already seven o'clock here. Normally I only stream till eight. Yep, Jago, the cat's here. Um, I'll probably be able to get through at least half of the trial. And then when we get the recess, I'll probably stop it there. Because I'm not streaming till 10 o'clock with this case. Because it'll drive me nuts. Okay. We're going to finish preparations. Here we go. Now then, let's begin with a simple explanation of the class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. Uh, yeah, Red Pony. <laughs> um, again, that's one of the reasons why uh, Nagito is such a pain in my ass. Because be all the crap that he did in the first case, in Kuya's case... He made that trial last at least an hour longer than it should have been. So, it was very annoying. If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. Only the blackened. The wrong person. I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and that person will earn the right to leave this island. Yeah, two to three hours of Nagato agony. Exactly. So I'll probably be able to make it to the intermission, to the recess, and then we'll we'll stop it there, and we'll pick it up next week. I'm sure you guys are starving by now, but let's get revved up and raring to go. Whoever survives will be treated to a fancy lunch. Guess what? Rabbit curry is on the menu. <laughs> Rabbit curry. Huh? I'm not the main ingredient, right? I'm here today. Because Coach Nekomaru risked his life to protect me. I'm going to be the one who avenges him. I'll definitely find out who the killer is. And again, um, the similarities between Trigger Happy Havoc and this one. The, you know, um, Sakura died and Hina was there to avenge her. And now Nekomaru died, and Akane is here to avenge him. So we have a big brute dying, and we have a buxom character fighting for them. I do, Gama. And again, I did pop into the room when Fuyihiko and Akane 
were uh, uh, chatting and Fuihiko told Akane, hey, you better have your little chat with Dekomaru. I'm definitely not tempted by curry. Got it! <laughs> Her face is ridiculous. Uh, Akane, you seem to have an impressive amount of drool flowing from your mouth. Hey, why don't we try going over the incident? We weren't able to leave Strawberry House, so I want to make sure we get a detailed understanding. Um, I discovered Nekomaru's body a little before 7 a.m. I headed over to Grape Tower from Monokuma Taichi and found the body there. Hajime and Chiaki were also with me. Hajime was with Miss Sonia and Chiaki that early in the morning? Well, they did make animes out of the Danganronpa games. I have not seen them, but uh, I do know they exist because I've heard talks of them. So tell me you three were together since last night! Imbasso, I am not some woman with flexible legs! <laughs> However, we do know that she is not a virgin. <laughs> uh, of course you're not. You're much classier than that. With legs like those, I could probably do the splits real easy. Hello. We just happened to run into each other on the first floor of Grape House and went to the tower together. And then... The three of us discovered Nekomaru's body. And that triggered the death discovery announcement. was made soon after. Akane heard that and rushed over. We heard the body discovery announcement too. From Strawberry House, obviously. As I recall, we found out the elevator was out of order, which left us stuck. So we decided to go to the tower for the time being and headed for Strawberry Hall. Someone even broke Strawberry Hall's door button. We couldn't go anywhere because of that. Thinking we should at least find some method to communicate, we set our sights on the lounge telephone. Forget these boring intros. Let's talk about the killer. Easy, Akane. Anyway, it's definitely someone from Strawberry House. What do you mean, definitely? I don't know about that. There's no way a chick would kill someone so cruelly. So it must be one of you Strawberry House dudes. I just have a bad feeling like he committed suicide again. Confess, or I'll break all of you in half! You're the cruelest one here! Now, now. Enough with the lover's quarrel. We need to think about this seriously. We don't have the luxury of discussing irrelevant things. The incident this time has many questions. The incident notwithstanding, I also have many questions. Then Turn the crowd. With something even Miss Sonia can understand. The weapon. Huh. Well, the weapon is obvious, right? No, it's not. Huh. What the heck, you guys? The weapon. You can totally tell just by looking. You can tell the weapon just by looking. It wouldn't be much of a mystery if that were true. The only thing at the crime scene that looked like a weapon was probably the hammer. I guess we should figure out the weapon first. The weapon was right there at the scene of the crime. That pillar, huh? No, the hammer! The killer used that hammer and beat the crap out of him. If it was unexpected, I suppose that is possible. That's right. It was a surprise beating. The weapon is decided. Uh, the hammer in the tower was the weapon. Like you said, it looks like that's the case, but... I 
guess we should figure out the weapon first. The weapon was right there at the scene of the crime! That pillar, sure. huh? No, the hammer! The killer used that hammer and beat the crap out of him! If it was unexpected, I suppose that is possible. That's right! It was a surprise beating! The weapon is decided! I think it's tipped over pillar. I think it's I tipped over pillar and weapon. beating. The weapon was right there at the scene of the crime! That pillar, huh? No! The hammer! The killer used that hammer and beat the crap out of him! No? <sighs> Damn it! Okay, it's not the hand to pillar. We figure out the weapon first. The weapon was right there at the scene of the crime. That pillar, huh? We'll try pillar fragments. No, the hammer. The killer used that hammer and beat the crap out of him. No, it's not that either. Damn it! I guess we should figure out the weapon first. The weapon was right there at the scene of the crime! That pillar, huh? No! The hammer! The killer used that hammer... ...and beat the crap out of him! If it was unexpected, I suppose that is possible. That's right! It was a surprise beating! It wasn't a the surprise beating. Is decided. I guess we should figure out the weapon first. The weapon was right there at the scene of the crime. That pillar, huh? No, the hammer. I don't have much of an option here. The killer used that hammer and beat the crap out of him. If it was unexpected, I suppose that is possible. That's right. It was a surprise beating. The weapon is decided. I don't think that's the case. I guess we should figure out the weapon first. The weapon was right there at the scene of the crime. That pillar, huh? No, the no. hammer. The I think I got it. That hammer and beat the crap out of him. That's it. No, that's wrong. Because the pillar is too new. That's right. No, I can't accept that that hammer was the. Hold on. Why not? Why can't you accept it? A lot of oil was flowing from Nekomaru's body, just like human blood, right? If the hammer was used to beat Nekomaru, you'd expect some oil to be on it at least. Yep, and that hammer was clean. But that hammer was clean. So that's why you can't accept that it's the murder weapon. Well, yeah, but the killer might have wiped off the oil later. Why? Well, obviously, to make the hammer look like it's not the murder weapon. Then but why bother cleaning the oil? If they didn't want it to look suspicious, they would have discarded the hammer. See, again, I'm... St I'm Again, other than the soft sauce on Gundam, I'm still thinking that the uh, this is a suicide. And that the hammer was used some way. The pillar, you know, Nekomaru's, because Nekomaru's head wound doesn't match the, he uh, uh, the hammer. But I'm wondering if he, you know, if it... Uh, the the bang that they heard was the pillar falling over, <clears throat> and Necromaro going over with it. You're pretty insightful, baby gangster. Baby gangster, me. Just so you all know, I was trying to test you guys. It's all right, Soda. I thought maybe you guys mistook the hammer for the weapon or something. It seems that was a waste of time. Then what was the real weapon used to murder Nekomaru? That's the problem. 
There wasn't anything else at the crime scene that looked like a potential weapon. Then, how about we look at it from a different angle? If it doesn't have oil on it, it's not the weapon. So whatever has oil on it must be the weapon, right? The actual weapon had oil on it, but if it's something at the crime scene, it's the I pillar. See. The only thing with oil on it is that broken pillar. Then that pillar is the weapon! Coach Nakamaru got clobbered with that pillar! We already said it wasn't that. Nobody could withstand a blow from that pillar. Even if you used 100% of your muscle strength, it would be impossible to wield it as a weapon. Why? We tried to move it, right? Yeah, this is where Akane's grunting. Yeah, barely, no use, barely budging. Didn't I tell you? Yeah, this is all repeat stuff. Yeah, that pillar was pretty freaking heavy. But there's one dude who could have lifted that pillar. Huh? Who are you talking about? Coach Nekomaru's robot body. With that dude's super strength, lifting a pillar would be real easy. So, he lifted the pillar, and then what? Did he use it to beat himself? I don't think so. You mean, Nekomaru killed himself? Don't be stupid! He's the type to commit suicide! Then even if Nekomaru could have lifted that pillar, it has nothing to do with the case at all! Well, I guess you're right. What the heck?! But it does bother me a little. That word suicide. By the way, the fourth murder of the killing school life was apparently ruled a suicide. Yep. Our girl. Our girl Sakura. Huh? No, that shouldn't matter. There's no way Nekomaru would commit suicide. But that's a problem. If it's not the pillar, then there's no other weapon we can think of. Um. There may be a way to use the pillar as a weapon without lifting it. Huh? For reals? For yes. real? For reals. I see. So my gut was right after all. All right. It's up to you, Sonia. Prove that pillar was the murder weapon. Understood. Then I shall give it my all. Yes, his head was off. Sonia, here I go. <laughs> There's no need to lift that pillar. If the pillar was not lifted, beating him with it is beyond a dream. What about tipping the pillar over? They aimed right for his head and bullseye. Even I could probably tip it over. Considering the pillar's weight, it probably exerted a ton of force. Sonia, you go, girl! <laughs> I'm getting hella excited! The killer murdered Nekomaru by tipping over that pillar. Is that really it? There's no need to lift that pillar. If the pillar was not lifted, the pillar, the chain. beating him with it is beyond a pillar dream. Pillar fragments, broken what about doorknob, the pillar over? wire. They aimed right for his head and bullseye. Even I could probably tip it over. Considering the pillar's weight, it probably exerted a ton of force. Sonia, you go, girl! <laughs> I'm getting hella excited! I don't... There's no need to lift that pillar. If the pillar was not lifted, beating him with it is beyond a dream. What about tipping the pillar over? They Oops. aimed right for his head and bullseye. Even I could probably tip it over. Considering the pillar's weight, it probably exerted a ton of force. Sonia, you go, girl! 
<laughs> I'm getting hella excited! There's no need to lift that pillar. If the pillar was not I think I have to do him with it is what about tipping the pillar that aimed right for his even I could probably tip it over. I think I have to do pillars weight. Probably exerted a ton of force. Pillars weight and tipping over. Sonia, you go, girl. <laughs> I'm getting hella excited. There's I'm gonna no try this. If the pillar was not lifted, beating him with it is beyond a dream. What about tipping the pillar over? No, He's you. Right for oh, oh damn it! Even I could probably tip it over. Considering the pillar's weight, it probably exerted a ton of force. Sonia, you go, girl. <laughs> I'm getting hell excited. Yeah, hush. There's no need to lift that pillar. If the pillar was not lifted, beating him with it is beyond a dream. What about tipping the pillar over? No. Damn it! There's no need to lift that pillar. If the pillar was not lifted, Beating him with it is beyond a dream. Well, let's try. Uh, I originally I'm had. The pillar over. No, it's not the good night button. Damn it! There's no need to lift that pillar. If the pillar was not lifted, Jane. beating him with it is beyond a dream. What about tipping the pillar over? There we go. No, that's wrong. I knew it had to do with tipping the pillar over. If Nekomaru was crushed by the pillar, then there should have been fragments on top of his body. Huh? Fragments? The pillar fragments were scattered beneath Nekomaru's body, but there weren't any on top of his body. If the pillar had been tipped over and crushed it, the fragments should have been on top of his body instead. I briefly considered that too, but it's probably not what happened. Uh, I see. That was entirely my bad. If they didn't tip it over, then how did the killer murder Nekomaru with that pillar? How much longer are you gonna focus on the pillar? Just let it go already. There was oil on it. It has to be involved. Th there's no way I can let it go. I'm positive that. Nekomaru was killed by that pillar. Why are you so certain about that? I just have a feeling. A feeling, huh? That's just your instincts. But we can't say for sure that that instinct is wrong, can we? Huh? There's another way to use that pillar to kill. You guys just haven't noticed it. Is that true? Then I shall ask you, what way is that? You guys, same as usual. This is the you shit I'm talking to about. You're clear a path to the future with your own powers. So you just stand there and falter. This is all this monologuing. Of talent. And you all intend to fight the future foundation? You make me laugh. This goddamn monologuing is unbelievable. you say regardless it's not like i want to die with the rest of you so i guess i should lend a hand hey nagito what the hell happened to you how come you're not talking like a lunatic anymore he is talking like a lunatic i've learned a valuable lesson ignorance is by far the greatest shame huh? what do you mean who cares just tell us how the pillar was used to kill! Well, first of all, the pillar itself is not enough. But when combined with a specific item, there's a way it could be possible. A specific item? Of course, the ultimate weapon. 
Uh, ultimate weapon? Isn't that the thing you get when you clear the final dead room? So, Nagito knows what the ultimate weapon is? Of course I know. But I'm pretty sure everyone else has seen it, you know? We've seen it? That's right. You've seen it clearly. Because I, the one who has claimed dominion over evil, am the ultimate weapon. <laughs> I am he who cuts the insolent catalyst which flows out from the chaos with the sword of victory. Okay, this is funny. It's only fitting that I deserve to be called the ultimate weapon. No, you are far greater than the ultimate weapon. Since you wield your four dark devas of destruction. Sonia, don't encourage him. I, I see. I don't know why, but I'm not liking this. Cut the bullshit and say it clearly. What is the ultimate weapon? In order to clarify that, we first need to solve the secret of the funhouse. It's got a point there. Huh? The secret of the funhouse? You still don't realize it? Jeez, get it together. You're supposed to be the symbols of hope, aren't you? Ah, I forgot. Except for Hajime, of course. Oh, and the fucking dig. Except for Hajime? You son of a bitch. We make it out of this. I'll explain it to you guys. Anyway, we must first clarify the secret of the funhouse, right? Then I think it must have something to do with the structure of the funhouse. Correct. Strawberry House leads to Strawberry Tower, and Grape House leads to Grape Tower. But in actuality, they are both the same building, and both houses are linked to the Central Tower. It is undeniable that such a sweet building structure is the secret of the Fun House! Man, not only does that make perfect sense, but Miss Sonia's beautiful voice is just so soothing. Faux show! I shall leave this matter to your discretion. Faux show! The two houses are connected to the tower in the middle. I thought that at first too, but... I ended up finding proof that completely contradicts that. Strange feeling in the tower. Yes, Marsh, this game will give you a headache. In truth, Strawberry Tower and Grape Tower are actually the exact same place. So that's the secret of the Funhouse. Is that really it? It's weird to say they're both the same place. I mean, the walls are different colors. And the designs on the floor are also different. We've already settled this problem. Give it ten years before you argue with Miss Sonia. The whole time we were thinking the two towers are the same building, but if that was the only mystery, there's no way Nagito would mention it here. In truth, Strawberry Tower and Grape Tower are actually the exact same place. So that's the secret of the Funhouse. Is that really it? Weird to say they're both the same place. I mean, the walls are different colors. And the designs on the floor are also different. We've already settled this problem. Give it ten years before you argue with Miss Sonia. Yeah, yeah, come on. In truth, Strawberry Tower and Grape Tower are actually the exact same place. No, yeah, I knew what I had to do. It was just a matter of getting to it. Both of those towers, are they really the same place? What? Why are you asking that now? Do you harbor a grudge because my kingdom destroyed your homeland? Hajime, I won't tolerate any sort of rebellion. I mean, doesn't it seem strange? When we went to Grape Tower from Grape Hall, Nekomaro's body was in front of the door to Strawberry Hall. But when we went to Strawberry Tower from Strawberry Hall, the 
Jake's body was in front of the door to Grape Hall. It's probably some kind of trick, like the floor rotating 180 degrees or something. If it is, then see? That means it could have passed as the exact same place, right? If so, then what? Do you seriously think such a simple answer is the correct answer? Does that mean he's wrong? Oops, I guess I've said too much. Oh, you motherfucker. If the floor didn't rotate, then that means we need to think about the structure of the building again. Nope, oh, here we go. Time for some sword swiping. Then how about this? Somebody moved Nekomaru's body. While we were moving from Grape Tower to Strawberry Tower? But we should have all been together during that time. Even if they tried to move the body inside the tower. Then Monokuma did it. Oh. While we were moving, Monokuma quickly moved things around. But Nekomaru's body wasn't the only thing moved. Are you saying the broken pillar was moved too? If it is too heavy to carry, let them roll it. Just like if there is no bread, let them eat cake. There are many different ways. The body and the pillar could have been moved. The pillar and Nekomaru could have been moved piece by piece. I decree it was not a color doing. Moving the body and the pillar in such a short time. That might be hard even for Monokuma, don't you think? It seems you have forgotten. Monokuma is surprisingly strong. Wielding the power of the futuristic Robo Bear. The pillar of the body could have moved it all easy as pie. No, it's definitely a hole in what she just said. I need to show her the evidence that contradicts that. It seems you have forgotten. Broken doorknob. Monokuma is surprisingly strong. Wielding the power of the futuristic Robo Bear. The pillar, the body, everything at the. Crap! It seems you have forgotten. Monokuma is surprisingly strong. Wielding the power of the, the pillar, the body, he could have moved it all easy as pie. I gotta be over more. It seems you have forgotten. Monokuma is surprisingly strong. Wielding the power of the, the pillar, the body, everything at the crime scene? No, it's still not that. Crap. It seems you have forgotten. Monokuma is surprisingly wielding the power of the futuristic Robo Bear. The pillar, the body, everything at the crime scene. Allow me to cut through those words. Moving the body and pillar is possible, but it would have been impossible to move the oil on the floor. Huh? When the position of Nekomaru's body and the pillar changed, the oil surrounding his body moved too. Physically moving all of the oil like that is simply not possible, no matter how you look at it. Then it's impossible to think it was moved. Oh, I am terribly sorry. I cannot believe I got so fired up. No problem. It's all right. A fired up Miss Sonia is awesome to watch. That wasn't so too what horrible. What really happened? Does that mean the two towers aren't the same building? Hmm. We can't be certain of that either. Not when the experiment involving the handbook I left on the tower floor was a complete success. Yeah, the e-handbook was still there. That's why we thought the two towers were the same building. If they're not the same building, or two different buildings, then what are they? Hmm. Hmm. I, I, no idea, huh? I have no idea either. This mystery ties to the secret of the funhouse. But we don't have enough clues to solve that mystery. 
Nagito does. Then the only thing that we can do is rely on the one person who has those clues. Dickhead. Hey, Nagito. I thought it would come to this. I knew my turn was coming. Asshat. Up. Fine. I'll tell you guys a big hint that can help you solve the secret of the funhouse. Give us the answer, not a friggin' hint. But then it wouldn't mean anything. I need you guys to do this class trial properly. Why can't he die? It's also important for me because it will help me determine something. I do like that. You can definitely tell the difference between someone who was murdered and someone who committed the murder. Because someone who murdered has the plain X on their face like Ibuki does there. But someone who committed a murder has a different symbol. Uh, Teru's got the, the knife and fork. Mikan's got, I don't know, uh, that's a plus sign. You know, like uh, the plus sign on a lot of nurses, uh, nurses, nurses, uniforms. This is. <laughs> um, I tried to see what Peko has on her face, but I couldn't tell. Those are bandages. Okay. Bandages in the shape of a plus. Determine. Is he talking about the traitor? If so, why did Nagito say all that all of a sudden? Did something happen to him? Yes, it did. But how do we know your hint is any good? It's suspicious that you're the only one who knows it. He's not, though. I have a good reason for that. The reason I'm the only one who knows it is because I was the only one who performed the appropriate action. He performed the appropriate action in order to learn his secret. The life-threatening game. I see. You're talking about the final dead room, right? You cleared the life-threatening game there and found something, didn't you? That's right. The hint is what I saw after I cleared it. In the depths of the final dead room, there was a hidden room surrounded by concrete. And there, a small conspicuous window waited, all by itself. From that window, I saw some very strange scenery. Strange scenery? Instead of explaining it, it might be faster just to show you. At an opportune time, I found a perfect camera in the final dead room. You took a picture? Yep. Nagito grinned cre Nagito grinned creepily. Stares motherfuckerly. As he retrieved a small digital camera from his inner pocket. See? This is it. And as he said that, he showed us a peculiar picture. Let me explain it to you again. I took this picture on the first floor of Strawberry House. From the secret room within the final dead room. But, don't you think it's weird? Yep. If the funhouse's structure is what you guys have been thinking, then there's lots of things that don't make sense in this picture, right? I think I got it. I think I got it. Look at the tower. And again, take the tree line. There's two floors. How the tower, how the houses are connected, I don't know. But the tunnels into the tower are on top of each other. That's why you can't go in it. And when you hit the button in the grape tower, you heard that, that clunk. 
That was the floor. Raising and lowering. That's why the chain on Strawberry House's door didn't matter. That door leads to nowhere. Hello, Cat. Nice to see you. I was busy. So that's the mystery of the tower. It's the same tower, but the floor changes because it raises and lowers. Lots of things that shouldn't make sense in this picture. Then let's begin. Shall I call it thinking time? What does it make sense in this picture? Here. If the structure of the fun house is what we thought it was. Grape house and strawberry house should link to the tower in the middle. Which means, if you're viewing the tower from strawberry house, you should see Grape House behind it. But in this photo, I don't see anything behind the tower. No shadow, no shape, no Grape House at all. I see. And is that it? Now, like I said, there are lots of things that don't make sense in this photo. Which means there are other contradictions contained in it. What does it make sense in this picture? No, that's yeah. No. Here. You said this photo was taken from the hidden room inside the final dead room, right? that's the case, then that means it should have been taken from the first floor of Strawberry House. Yeah, it should have been. Then, this is definitely strange. That's right. This photo doesn't look like it was taken from the first floor. The angle suggests it was taken from higher up. So Strawberry House is on top of Grape House. So I wonder if No. Damn it. I'm still a little lost. That's right. Good call. In summary, this is the truth contained in this photo. The first floor of Strawberry House is located in a high area, and Grape House is not behind the tower. It's not? Are you saying that Grape House is merely an illusion spell cast by Monokuma's cursed eye? From this point on, do your own thinking. Now that you've finally met the same requirements as me. If you guys are truly symbols of hope, you can easily solve a simple mystery like this. Where do we stop? Do we stop on Hajime? No, we keep going. See, it, it almost looks like Pekko's got torches. It might be possible for Hajime to solve it too. Even though he's just a normal high school student. Again with the fucking dig. Despite the fact that you don't have a real talent, you already know about the other clue. The other clue? Is he talking about that one time? Well, hello there, Hajime. Yeah, yeah, why is it there? Because he showed up. The trap door on the floor. You're referring to when you suddenly appeared on the second floor of Grape House, right? I'm asking you just to be safe. At the time, where do you think I came from? The top 
floor, right? Such sharp eyes. So you realized it already. Top floor. So the third floor? But the Monokuma Archive should be the only room on the third floor of Grape House. What does it mean? Was that thing just now another hint of figuring out the mystery behind the funhouse's structure? The reason Nagato appeared from the third floor. Using the photo he took, I might be able to find the answer if I just think about it. Fuck, are we doing a logic dive? Yep. Is it like logic dive? Yeah, logic dive. Fuck. Wrong button. Forgot. I gotta jump. Oh, hi. How you doing? Now they're getting tricky. Question one. Do Strawberry House and Grape House both exist? They exist. I hate logic dives. Question two. Are Strawberry House and Grape House the same building or two different buildings? They're the same building. Hello. Question three. How are Strawberry House and Grape House positioned with each other? Vertically. One on top of the other. It's all coming together. Not bad, only fucked up once. Sometimes that isn't the only logic dive. Got it. I know the secret of the funhouse. Then let me hear it. What kind of answer will you give, I wonder? In the picture Nagito took from Strawberry House, I didn't see Grape House at all. So where did Grape House go? There was only one possibility. It was in a position where it couldn't be seen from Strawberry House. Which means Strawberry House and Grape House are in the same building, but on different floors. Same building, different floors? Then the two houses aren't two different three-story buildings. They're actually one six-story building? Yep. If you think about it like that, based on Nagito's picture, it's clear where Strawberry House is located. Underneath. Or on top of Grape. Where is Strawberry House? It's the floors above Grape House. I see. On top of Grape House. That's where Strawberry House is located. Because of that, the photo taken from the first floor of Strawberry House was at a high angle. Yeah, the treetops. Over the treetops. Altogether, 
This means the first floor of Strawberry House is also the fourth floor above Grape House. Oh, snap! I never expected that the two houses were connected vertically. How did it But what about the shape of the building? The two houses were completely different shapes. Um, Strawberry House is four-sided, and Grape House is six-sided, right? It never occurred to us that they were the same building because it was structured with two different shapes. A quadrilateral and a hexagon, overlaid atop each other to misdirect how we would perceive them. But it's entirely possible. And it worked, didn't it? Disregarding the tower, we fully believe the two houses were two separate, distinct buildings. In order to conceal the unique design of the fun house, Monokuma put us to sleep so we couldn't look at the outside of the building when he brought us to it. You've just been Kumad! Oh, you dick! <laughs> think a building full of so many surprises totally deserves to be called a fun house? Then it's true? The building was yep. really like that? That's right! Those two houses exist on different floors in the same building! Constructing a building like that on your own without my knowledge? H how horrible! Then what about the towers? Are they arranged vertically just like the houses? Yeah, Strawberry Tower and Grape Tower should have also been different floors inside the same building. Just like Strawberry House was on top of Grape House. Yep. Strawberry Tower was also on top of Grape Tower. However, if they're different floors within the same building, why was Nekomaru's body in both places? Aw, your precious hammies don't know. But it's so simple. Alrighty then. I'll be the one who solves this mystery in a flash. Please watch me, Miss Sonia. Oh, I see. Do whatever you like. Oh, the cold bird. Really make her watch me. I'm gonna stand out till she notices me. Alright, I think we have to agree with Soda. Strange feeling in tower. I'm gonna solve this mystery in a flash. And hurry up, dumbass. One of the bodies in one of the towers was actually a dummy. You mean a fake body? Nekumaru died with a mechanical body. It should be possible to construct a dummy from spare parts. You're magnificent, Gundam! No fair! You totally stole my spotlight! So which one was the fake body? Shut up! Just pick one of them! Okay, no. A dummy of Nekomaru's body existed? Does that mean the killer prepared it in advance? But is something like that even possible? I'm gonna solve this mystery in a flash! And hurry up, dumbass! One of the bodies in one of the towers was actually a dummy. You mean a fake body? Nekomaru died with a mechanical body. It should be possible to construct a dummy from spare parts. You're magnificent, Gundam! No fair! You totally stole my spotlight! So which one was the fake body? Well, shut come. up! Just pick one of them! Hmm, tell me if Nekomaru's body exists. I'm not I'm sure. Solve this mystery in a flash. And hurry up, dumbass! One of the bodies in one of the towers. I'm gonna try this again. Was actually a dummy. No, that's wrong. That's what I thought it was. Nekomaru's body wasn't a dummy. That can be proven by Kazuichi's account. Huh? Me? Remember? When we moved from Grape Tower to Strawberry Tower. 
we thought the body had moved. And that's when you said... The parts that are carefully arranged when I disassemble the body, I'll move too. Right up until that moment, you were disassembling Nekomaru's body at Great Tower, right? The killer couldn't have known how you'd take apart his body, so they couldn't have built a dummy. Unless Kazuichi was the one who built the dummy, then it would be a different story. Oh boy, oh, Sonia. <laughs> Miss Sonia, that's a pretty harsh joke. You are joking, right? It's all right. Kazuichi is not the killer. If he was, he wouldn't have fixed the elevator or the button in Strawberry Hall. Mikansu Miki Despair. Hello and welcome into the stream. And you really hit hard. <laughs> okay. Mikan was my favorite character in this game. Okay. This is my first time playing it, so obviously I don't want any spoilers or any, you know, any hints of what's going on. But Mikan was my favorite. Um, I can't wait to find out what really happened. But thank you for very much for showing up. I appreciate you stopping in. We are knee deep in uh, Nekomaru's trial. Hope you're doing well today, by the way, too. Welcome in. It'd be much more convenient for the killer if it stayed broken. I see. That is disappointing. I'm even more disappointed. However, even if Nekomaru's body wasn't a dummy, it's meaningless if we don't have the important answer. The reason Nekomaru's body was in both towers, even though it was supposed to be on different floors. Maybe it was simply moved? The body moved to a different floor? You can't think of a device like that? A device that moves things to different floors in the same building? Yeah, an elevator. A device like that. A device that transport things to different floors in the same building. I feel like I've seen that before. Oh my god. Alright, here's the uh, hangman's gambit. It's an elevator. Let's see how well I do with this. Give me an E. Excellent, thank you. I'm just destroying these. I need an L. Enough of these E's and V's, damn it. There's the L. Now I'll give me those E's back. Oh, A's. Need a V. Thank you. Need an A again. Thank you. Need a T. Thank you. And my O. And the R. That's probably the best I ever did on those games. be talking about an elevator what are you saying nekomaru's body was transported using an elevator where the hell is this elevator anyway it's the tower itself the inside of the tower is one big elevator which means the tower was designed so that the whole room goes up and down like an elevator So whether you enter from Strawberry Hall or Grape Hall, it all leads to the same room, right? So that's why we could only enter it from one side or the other. Now well, that you mention it, sometimes when I pressed the door button, it took a while for it to open. It wasn't a door button, it was an elevator button. I see. We were basically waiting for the room to arrive just like an elevator. Yep. Please hold on. 
If the inside of the whole tower ascends and descends like an elevator... Then why is there a picture of a strawberry on the far back door when you enter from Grape Tower? It's an illusion. And a picture of a grape on the far back door when you enter from Strawberry Tower. If the room just moves up and down like an elevator, there's no reason for the doors to change. Plus, after the incident, the far back door and grape tower had chains wrapped around it, right? But when we entered Strawberry Tower, those chains were gone. Along with a broken door, no uh, door handle. Not just that, but if I remember correctly, even the doorknob was broken off. There are too many strange things. Was that tower really an elevator? When you see people and things, make sure you focus on the good parts instead of the bad. What did you say? So, let's put aside what's changed and focus our attention on what hasn't. Why do we have to do that? It's fine. Come on. What does everything that hasn't changed have in common? The things that didn't change when we moved between the two towers. That includes the body, the pillar, and the oil. We've been talking about all that stuff for a while now. There shouldn't be anything strange about that, not even the fact that they all moved at the elevator. Um, the one thing these they have in column... They're all on the floor. I see. Is it safe to say that all the items on the floor didn't change? And? And? Why did the picture on the far back door change? If you can figure that out, you'll have the answer. The reason is because the elevator has something unique about it. There's something unique about that elevator. Only the floor moves. I see. So that's it. The elevator was designed so only the floor moved. Only the floor moved? Which means the whole room wasn't an elevator. Only the floor was. That's why we saw different doors in each tower. Which means on the first floor of Grape Tower, the door on the far back wall had a strawberry design. And on the fourth floor, which was Strawberry Tower, a different door on the far back wall had a grape design. Then, where do the different floors lead? Nekomaru. Nekomaru defeated the final dead room. This is a suicide case. The noise that they heard was the floor. Nekomaru somehow Tied himself to the door handle of the tower because Strawberry Tower is on top. Nita. Yeah. Nekomaru tied himself to the door handle of the tower and somehow got the floor to move. And that's why only pillar fragments are underneath. Yeah, I, I, I thought, wait, Nita, 
It's Nadai. Yeah, that's you left off the the eye. Yeah, Nekomaru somehow hung himself from the door handle of Grape Towers. No, of Strawberry Towers. He hung himself from the door handle of the Strawberry Tower door at the back of the the back of the tower. Somehow got the elevator to go down, the floor to go down. The pillar fell over. When the door handle when the door handle snapped, Nekomaru fell three floors, hit his head on the top of the pillar, and then rolled over. I think. I think that's how it goes. I want to say they lead outside, but they're probably just for show. Yes. I want to say that Nekomaru went in through Strawberry Tower. Because that's where the, the men were staying in Strawberry Tower. So he went into he went into but the question is but how did he how did he get the floor to move though is the question How did he get the floor to move I don't know that just yet. I think I know the end result. Again, I think it's another... Yes, the button that broke. But he broke it on the outside. He'd have to go in first. And then break it. See, I, I think I know the end result. I just don't know the steps how he got there. Just for show. Why was something like that necessary? To make us still so think that falsely believe that the doors were connected to where their picture signified. Hey, thank you, Chiaki. It was actually very effective. Because of that, we totally misunderstood the building structure. I don't get it. But I guess it means whoever designed this building had a totally twisted personality. That's Monokuma. Did you hear that, Monami? Don't blame this on me. Take responsibility for yourself. Then I'll take responsibility and gently caress you. <laughs> oh my god. There's no way that's gonna happen. Stop with the tasteless jokes. By the way, what does the chain on the far back door in Grape Tower mean? There's a it setup. Was probably wrapped there by the killer to keep us as far from Strawberry Tower as possible. Why? Because of that chain. You guys thought you couldn't enter there, right? Like you said, I could probably use these parts to repair the button, but seriously, hold on. Even if you do the repair button, what's going to happen to the chain? Yeah, yeah, we know this. Yeah, fix it. Yep, yep. Don't need to worry about that at all. Yes, got the it. The killer destroyed the Strawberry Hall button, so we'd stay away from Strawberry Tower. Everything was done to tamper with the evidence, so we wouldn't find out about the secret of the Funhouse. The appearance of a body in the tower would contradict what we thought we knew about the building. In that situation, if we'd gone to Strawberry Tower, we'd have seen that contradiction firsthand. And using that as a clue, we might have discovered the truth. The truth that the two houses and the two towers are actually one complete vertical building. The killer wanted to keep us from learning that. That's why they made us stay away from Strawberry Tower. They destroyed the button and wrapped a chain around the door just for that? Would it really have inconvenienced the killer if we learned the true structure of the building? Mm-hmm. 
I see that also doesn't explain why Necromaro's clock stopped at 7.30, though. It would have been a major inconvenience. After all, this funhouse is strongly connected to the ultimate weapon that killed Nekomaru. Hold on. You're progressing much too quickly. There's still a contradiction concerning the building structure. What a pain. It's fine already. Gundam, please proceed. You said earlier that Strawberry House and Grape House are connected vertically, right? Right. If so, how does the contact elevator supposedly transport us from one house to the other? I see, now that you mentioned it, I completely forgot about that matter. If that elevator moves vertically, then... When your back is facing the elevator, both towers should be on the same side. But, does this reflect reality? No, it doesn't. Inside Grape House, Grape Hall is on your right when your back is to the elevator. And inside Strawberry House, Strawberry Hall is on your left when your back is to the but elevator. But the, the elevator rotates. See, Which means the houses are on exact opposite sides of the tower. Answer me, fiend! What does this mean? What does this mean? I agree. What does this mean? What does it all mean, Basil? If the two houses are connected vertically, the position of the tower should be the same in both houses. But in fact, when my back is facing the app, Facing on the right, and when my back was facing the elevator and strawberry house, the tower was on my left. How can I break through this contradiction? The two Hold on. Contact elevator. The elevator should move vertically, not horizontally. However, at both houses, if the contact elevator is behind you, the towers are in opposite directions. Kazuichi's account. Which means your reasoning is clearly contradictory. What's with this iron curtain of teamwork? I gotta use Kazuichi's account. If the two houses are connected vertically, the elevator should move vertically, not horizontally. However, at both houses, if the contact elevator is behind you, the towers are in opposite directions. All right, it's not that one. Damn it! If the it's two houses Gundams. are connected vertically, the elevator should move vertically, not horizontally. Yeah, it's Gundam's no, account. I know it was one of them. The elevator wasn't just moving vertically. Isn't that right, Kazuichi? Huh? Me? It, come on. You used the elevator while you were holding that compass Nagito gave you, right? Ah, uh, that. Yeah, it was pretty strange. From start to finish, somehow the compass needle rotated 180 degrees. Rotated 180 degrees? Remember yeah. Monokuma? As the elevator moved between the two houses, Monokuma said it was fancy. It also rotated 180 degrees. It was probably following the building's perimeter as it rotated to the other side. Which means the exit would be on the opposite side once you arrived at the other Son house, of a right? bitch. When we think of an elevator, 
We always think of an elevator being inside a building. In this case, the elevator is outside the building. And thanks to that, the tower we saw on our right side when we arrived at Grape House appeared on our left side when we were at Strawberry House. An elevator that rotates while it moves. Is that even possible? It's like something from an amusement park. Well, a fun house is an amusement park attraction, you know. He's got and a point. And since the building doesn't really need to be structurally practical, it makes for some splendid fun. That's not splendid at all. You're inhuman. You say I'm inhuman, but I'm just a bear. So I was never human to begin with. Yes. I'm different from these lowly humans. So we're done with the secret of the fun house, right? Then let's start talking about the important stuff. What's the ultimate weapon that killed Nekomaru? And how'd they combine it with the pillar? Huh? You still don't know what the ultimate weapon is yet? It's what I found at the Octagon, you know. Knowledge. What is the Octagon? I haven't heard about that yet. Oh my... I can't believe I have to explain that now. What? As long as you know what an Octagon means, you can solve this simple mystery easily. What an Octagon means? It's an eight-sided shape. Octagon is a shape with eight sides, right? <sighs> I didn't expect you have you no idea, Molox. He's getting really For annoying. A substitute reserve course student, you're quite knowledgeable. Again, with the fucking digs and the jibes. I guess I should continue listening. Where is the place befitting of the name Octagon? The place befitting of the name Octagon. It's probably. Okay. Not there. Crap. The the hell. Crap. The elevator? Oh, I'm going to lose here. I have no idea. So if you want to shout it out, feel free. I want to try. Yeah, see. I'm losing big time here. I'm lo uh, I can't move. The area just below the first blue tunnel. Apparently not. Or is it here? No. Crap. Well, we're going to have to redo this one. Yeah, 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 let's go. I'm the black end. Yeah, whatever. Fuck off. Cat, I'm going to kick your ass. It's always Hajime. Yeah, yeah, let's go. This is what this I'm talking about. There's always at least head? one question in every case where I'm like, where the hell? No, 
Go. I would think it's the it's the got to be the middle layer of strawberry house though. Not strawberry holla grape hall. There's no other place to highlight. I selected the first blue one. They said it wasn't Strawberry Hall or Grape Hall. The triangle shape, the blue line below the green. Like here? The end of the blue line below what? I, I don't have time for this anymore. Serious? You're talking about the secret room surrounded by concrete in the depths of the final dead room. <sighs> Unfucking. Why is that place the octagon? You know how the four-sided strawberry house is on top of the six-sided grape house? If you cut a four-sided shape out of a six-sided one, you get eight edges. It becomes an eight-sided shape. That's basically the gist of it. Unfucking real. The true identity of the octagon is that secret room in the depths of the final dead room. In actuality, that place contained various weapons. Then the ultimate weapon was there too? That's a little different. I learned the true identity of the ultimate weapon at the octagon. The true identity of the ultimate weapon is the funhouse. Which means the killer used the building structure as their weapon and killed Nekomaru. Okay, I was wrong as far as knowledge goes. Like me, the killer probably realized the secret of the funhouse from the scenery. And then thought of a way to kill making use of the building structure. The funhouse itself is the weapon, so they killed using the building structure? That's why the killer tried to keep us from learning the mystery of the building. But 
more importantly, using the building itself as a weapon? Such a spectacular crime. Let's go to the intermission. <laughs> it truly deserves to be oh, called the God, ultimate weapon. Fawn House is the true identity the ultimate weapon. What does this mean? How did the killer use that to murder Nakamaro? And who is the killer who did that? Thank God, fucking intermission. Hiya. Well, hello there. I thought of a new bad word to call hello. Monami. Well, I can already tell I won't be pleased by this. Now, let me say it right away. <laughs> I'm already used to the insults and slander. There's no way I'll get hurt by a mere word. Monami is a serious... Stefatly? That's much more straightforward than I expected. Stefatly, huh? Tsk, tsk, tsk. That's not it. That's not it at all. Stupid, fat, and ugly. The perfect jet stream attack incorporating all three of these would be... Stefatly. There's a fat hidden in there? Okay, everyone. All together now. Monami is a serious Stefatly. Yeah, I need a break now. Yeah, no, we're not resuming. Hello. Yeah, I need to stop. This is what I'm talking about. The the complete asinine because you select Strawberry Tower. No, that's not it. You should select or Strawberry House. Not it. You select Grape House. Not it. You got to select this little part of Grape House, which you were just told wasn't it, which now miraculously is it. Oh, goodness gracious. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls and everyone in between, that's it for tonight's episode of How Can We Drive Me Knucking Futs with this game. And it succeeded. It succeeded fairly well. I've had to cheat more times in this case than I have in both games combined. Um, <clears throat> that Othello was, I would never have gotten that. I should have gotten the numbers if I'd have paid attention better. But it's unbelievable the, the amount of ridiculousness that's included in these cases now. But... Thankfully, I'm taking a week off of this. Again, I only stream Danganronp on the weekends. So, tomorrow, we will be continuing with Persona 5 Vanilla. And we should be starting off with the school festival and Mr. Pleasant Boy himself. Um, there will be no stream on Wednesday because I have Drill. So, I'm probably going to do another stream on Friday, similar to how I did last week. When I didn't stream on Monday, but I streamed on Wednesday and Friday. So, thank you very much for stopping by and watching me get frustrated. The links to my social media are right there in the chat. If you care to uh, follow me on Twitter or come and join the Discord, you can come and chat and have a good time. Um, again, stream tomorrow, probably stream Friday, no stream Wednesday. Those two will be... Uh, Persona 5, and then we'll resume this trial next Saturday. Um, I still have to chat with somebody regarding a special stream on Monday. Um, if I can't get that together, I'll probably do a day stream of more Yakuza 0. Because I really enjoyed that game. And again, as soon as Rampa is over, I'm going to be doing Yakuza on the weekends. Which will be a pleasant break from... Again, two Danganronpa games in a row. But thank you, everybody, for stopping by. Thanks for the uh, follows. Thanks for the subs. I really appreciate that. It means It means so much to me. And uh, until we see each other again, remember what Jerry Springer said. Take care of yourself and each other. Get vaccinated if you can. It's the only way you're going to be able to see each other in big groups. Thank you very much. Again, love you all. Stay safe. And I'll see you to, uh, again next time. Bye now.